Can you see my slides? Yes, yeah, now live. <laughs> Electronet fracture. Right. Now, this was the talk in Promapol 16 I had given. And I think at that time it was comparatively new, but still there are quite a few things which we'll talk about. American Society of Bone and Mineral Research, atypical fracture femur, located anywhere along the femur from just distal to the lesser trochanter to just proximal to the supracondylar plane. I think it has been the whole of the femur, not neck femur, but subtrochanteric onwards all the way, associated with no trauma or a minimal trauma as in the fall from standing height or not less. Transverse or a short oblique configuration. Complete fracture extends through both cortices and may be associated with the medial spike. Incomplete fracture involves only the lateral cortex. Now, can I can I ask somebody, well, how do you differentiate between the alendronate fracture and the and the calcium deficiency fracture? Anybody except Des Pandey? Sir, alendronate fractures are usually low intensity trauma in a very uh, in the strongest bone that is femur. Plus, fracture hota hai. Sir. Patient comes and tells you that I had a low intensity trauma. So I mean, uh, slip and fall ki history ke saath aayega, sir, with but the major thigh bone like fracture. History that I didn't fall down. See, even osteoporosis will be like this. Osteomalacia will be like this. They are all pathological fractures. Sir, on the x-ray, sir, it will be, uh, the cortex will be having a very sharp demarcated uh -huh. horizontal level of fracture lines. Sir. No, anybody else wants to add up anything? Maybe, sir, sir uh, cortical come. thickness, um, related to cortical thickness, abnormal sir. cortical thickness. So, so there is cortical thickness in alendronate fractures. Alendronate is lateral cortex and uh, osteomalacia is medial cortex. Medial cortex. And there are loser zones as well in uh, osteoporotic fractures that you see in other. It is atypical fracture, as we mentioned about. Now, this is the one, it is a lateral cortex, which is the fracture. It can be subtrochanteric right up to the distal femur. And all these are the fractures. You can see that there is a lateral cortex. And you can see the thickening of the bone. If you are lucky to pick it up at this stage, patient is lucky for that. Because if in case it fractures, then I think the whole patient goes through completely different cycle. If you pick it up at this stage and nail it, then the patient has a far better prognosis than at this stage. This is a fracture. If it goes to this stage, then I think whatever the fixation you do, chances of non-union increase very rapidly. Major is transverse or short oblique configuration. Complete fracture extends through both cortices and may be associated with the medial spike. Incomplete fracture involves only lateral cortex. Now, you can see this lateral cortex here. This is the typical, this is my sister-in-law. I think this is the same patient. Yeah, this is my sister-in-law. She walked into from America. She walked into my house. And she was limping. Eight years old, she was on a lendronet and she was limping. So as soon as I saw her coming out of the airport, we had gone to pick her up. And she was limping. I said, why are you limping? He said, no, this is there for quite some time. I have shown to all everybody and nobody has been able to advise me. I am on a painkiller and this is, I am told, it is an aging process. So next day, I took her to the x-ray department and I saw this. And this to me obviously is pathological. So in order to prove her, I had the MRI done, which shows this. This is the one and this is the typical MRI picture. Now obviously American citizen coming from America. So I said you send these pictures to your, your orthopedic surgeon who was treating you and ask her, I am asking to be nailed at this stage. He says, but there is no fracture. Why do you want to nail it? I said, you just send it to her. Because I knew that being American, they will not be probably trusting me or they will not be able to tell me also anything, being a brother-in-law. In any case, 
the whole communication went through to the American surgeons and they said, sorry, this is agreed. We have not picked it up. This is an Allen Rollet fracture. So she underwent this nailing. And then after doing the nailing in about two weeks time, all of us went for our holidays and we had a, we had a lovely time enjoying the holidays. Because once you can see in nine months time, the whole thing held up. So if you can pick it up at this stage, you're very lucky. The whole thing becomes perfectly normal and you don't need anything to be done. And the nailing is the treatment of choice for this. And you know, without the fracture, nailing is the simplest procedure which you can undergo. Bilateral involvement is observed. And sir, one, observed. one question, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Sir, why lateral cortex is involved in a rentonut fracture? Uh, the stress fracture which occurs on the medial side uh, because of the calcium deficiency, because this is a weight bearing side. I don't think there are many explanations given for this lateral cortex, why lateral cortex only. This is what it starts. But I don't think there is any convincing evidence. There are hypotheses that why the lateral cortex is the one which is giving an Allen Rode. But I am not more familiar with any other definite reason why it's the lateral cortex which is the one which is affected. Anybody else and is aware of, please enlighten us. At the end. Uh, uh, sir, one thing I can uh, add, sir. Yes, yes. Allen Ronet fracture, there is a tension side failure uh, of the femur. That's why we get a fracture on the lateral side. Why? Why? Why tension side failure? Why not a compression uh -huh. side, which is normally in any other. Yes, sir. Uh, insufficiency factor are on and compression side. That's why. That, that is the one differentiating point, sir, between the insufficiency factor and this. Uh, 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 Question is, in Allen Rodin, why it starts from the lateral side? And anybody there, Asim? Asim, are you there? Anyway, once they come, they'll ask. I'm not familiar with this. Sir, the guess which I have uh -huh. is Allen Rodin and all these bisphosphonates, they inhibit the osteoclysis. The bone resorption is inhibited. Thereby, the bone mass increases. And... As the bone mass is more on medial compressive side, there is no fracture on medial side. But the lateral side, which is a tensile side, this density of bone, which is more, it breaks on tension sides. Because the reason has to lie in the mechanism of action of the bisphosphonates. No, I think what you said is true. Uh, but it is basically how the bisphosphonate work is, it does not allow the bone to resorb. Yeah, that's right. So, but it doesn't form bone. So basically, the, the osteoporosis, which is an increasing situation, it comes to us halt with alendronate, as we all know about it very well. So that is the one where the activity level is not there. So this uh, new bone formation, forming it, and uh, absorbing it, it doesn't bear. But why on the tension side only it gives fracture? I have not come under, come under any convincing argument for that. Sir, can I add something? Yes, yes, please add. Sir, usually the weight bearing side, that is a medial side here, has more of an osteoblast. And the lateral side, that is a tension side, has more of the osteoclast cells. So as alendronate inhibits osteoclast, the lateral cortex is more affected and due to calcium uh, decrease in the calcium level, osteoblast is more affected. So calcium deficiency causes fracture on the medial side by alendronate which inhibits osteoclast causes fracture on the lateral cortex. Thank you Pratik. There is something which is there. Okay. Bilateral involvement is observed. MRI bone scanning have a greater sensitivity than a radiography on an incipient fracture. I have four cases where MRI indicated query fracture, which was ignored, because I think I'm talking about now early phase. Even the radiologist was not familiar with this entity. And in one case, MRI was normal, but isotope bone scan picked up. Now I talk about this is the fracture, but you see the opposite side. Opposite side is also involved. Now, this fracture, which is, you know, this is going to fracture probably in the future. So before this fracture treatment, 
or immediately after this fracture treatment, you need the nailing of this to avoid this fracture. Now here, this fracture was treated and nailed. Fine, it is held up. But you see the opposite side. Opposite side also fractured. Opposite side also fractured later on. And uh, it had a problem. So ultimately ended up in both sides fractured. Not the ununited line on the right side. Now here was the patient whom I had seen. And I was fully aware of this entity. So I asked for an MRI. And MRI here was these changes which were there in MRI. The MRI people reported some density changes, but they didn't interpret this as an incipient fracture. And I told the patient, this is a fracture. Obviously, it is difficult for the patient to realize this wasn't interpreted properly. And the patient continued to move about in two weeks later, patient had a fracture exactly at the same site. So the, all these are the early findings which were missed by the radiologist who were not very familiar with this entity. So this was obviously nailed. This was nailed day one. Two years, still um, fracture not fully united. So went through this uh, isotope bone scan and this is the PET scan. Two years PET scan which showed positive and this shows that the fracture is not united and hence ultimately went down, redid the nailing and did the grafting on the medial side and ultimately the whole thing united. Thickest available nail, 13 millimeter was also not thick enough for this as you can see. But then the grafting and the thing which is there in four years time, the whole thing united. So this fracture is very notorious for a non-union and once you treat it, you got to treat it very, 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 very efficiently. I'll come to that. Now here was the isotope bones. This is MRI positive. This is isotope scan. And this isotope, this is a PET scan, which shows a fracture line with this red area. This is the most incipient fracture, which was not seen on the X-ray, but you can see it over here. So this PET scan can pick it up very, very early. So if there is any doubt, this PET scan can pick it up. In your city, if there is no PET scan, at least the MRI picks up large majority of the times, even if it is not seen otherwise. But today, once there is a thickening of the outer cortex, it has to be it has to be now confirmed that it is a it is a fracture. Only thing is, the patient doesn't agree that this is a fracture which needs treatment. And in order to convince the fracture patient, you'll have to probably do these investigations. Otherwise, this is 65 euro, 70 euro, aldrone and bed even due to neuro problem. Pain in the thigh three months. MRI reported query lesion and the interpretation of this impending fracture, but no fracture. Yet PET, say, PET scan showed this typical fracture. Now all these are the days when the MRI people were also not very familiar on to it. And here is the other patient, which I again I the, this is the PET scan, which really gives you the complete picture. But nowadays you don't need PET scan. Nowadays everybody is fully aware of. Even an ordinary MRI, you will be able to really pre-interpret it, except in the very early phase. Now being working in the city of Bombay, where I can ask for the investigation and majority of the people will undergo. So that's the reason when doubt and why either to convince the patient or the people around, you may have to ask for a PET scan. But majority of times it is the MRI which will be sufficient. Now here was the patient who had the pain in the hip. And the x-ray was taken, pelvis with both hips, didn't show anything. But you ask, never ask, in a hip patient, never ask for a pelvic with it. You got to ask with the hip, with upper one third or upper half of the femur. At least this much you have to ask. And you can see, you can very definitely demonstrate a typical alendronic fracture. In the hip pathology, I do not ask for a pelvis with both hips, but I ask for the hip with the upper upper half of the femur at least. Ask for the hip with upper two third of the femur. Now here, that is the here is the fracture you can see. This is another fracture you can see. So you can see quite a few of these fractures if you ask for this X-ray, lower down. If you ask only the hip X-ray, you will miss it. But you can see the thickening and everything is all here. 
and treatment is nailing and this is all what you need and everything supplied. But once it fractures, now you see, can you see anything different in this fracture? This is also Ellen Donut fracture. But if you observe this, what is now, what is different in this Ellen Donut fracture? Anybody? You can see these arrows. See this new bone formation. So I started this operation. I wasn't aware of this. You can see this. This is a bone density. I started this and I couldn't pass my reamer. So this is a very thick bone here. This has also been recorded in the alendronet fractures or alendronet pathology. Very thick fracture here, a very thick bone here. I started the reamer. I couldn't enter that. You can see I'm starting the reamer. I couldn't enter that. So ultimately, from the lower down, I went there and I reamed it out. I reamed it out and then I did the operation. But as you can see, by that time, the whole thing went haywire. And now this is the fracture which has reamed it out from distally because it wasn't there. And so you must be aware of particularly this sort of a entity. this sort of an entity, so that if you cannot read it or if you cannot pass your guide wire, then you must understand that this is the reason why probably in alendronate fracture, this bone, bone uh, sclerosis has occurred and it has been reported well. We have also reported this case somewhere. One of my boys has reported this. Sir, this, this fracture. You want to heal with that picture? Sorry? Your Patient went on to heal with that uh, trochantic wiring and. Well, you can see, it's a very. At the end of the surgery, it wasn't very good. Yeah, you are not happy. This didn't heal up. Ultimately, it needed a, it needed a hip replacement. Okay. Sanghya, uh, Negi, are you aware of why Allen Rodet fracture starts on the lateral side? No, sir. I googled it. I heard your question. After that, I was trying to Google it. There is no. <laughs> And the whole, I read the whole article. There is no explanation given. Okay. I heard your lecture kept quiet because I wasn't knowing, but I googled it. There is no logical explanation. Yeah, Dr. Pratik or somebody. somebody yeah, I heard that. Uh, Dr. Deshpande's argument and Pratik's, I heard that. Yeah. So here it is now. This was the fracture which was treated by this. Any comments? Anybody? If basically, Ellen Donet fracture takes a long time to heal. You can see opposite side. It will break. And see what I was talking, sclerosis. You can see the pen sclerosis. And you can see the maxillary cavity is fully obliterated here. If this is, if you can observe it, you will see it again and again. If you are not familiar with it, you won't see again and again. You can see this cavity. Seeing this cavity, the surgeon decided not to do the nailing, which probably was justified, but Ellen Rodet fracture, surface implant are not adequate because this takes a long time to heal and that's the reason the nail is the ideal implant. But in this situation, because of this small medullary cavity, which he saw it on the opposite side also, so he didn't want to start off reading. Ideally, it would have been because the guide wire will go. You start off with the smaller reamer if you are available, which in a zimmer set they are available from five millimeter. I understand, which you can go up to nine millimeter nail also. It would be good enough because there is a good good thickening which is there. You will be able to ream out probably, and you have to ream out only this area. So th this is again typical as I am talking about medullary cavity gets obliterated very thin medullary cavity and the sclerosis which you can see there. This is bound to fail. This is not going to work out. Now, here is the other one. This is a typical subprochantric fracture. It's been mentioned again and again nowadays that the point of entry has to be um, in the piriform fossa. Then only you will be able to get this reduction properly. 
such reduction in alendronate fracture is destined to fail. This is bound to fail. This fracture is also, now you put a surface implant, this is not going to work it out. So I think alendronate fractures, unless treated properly from day one, is not going to work out. Well, you, when you, 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 here you can see so proximal femur plate is done. All these things are, do not work. Now here is the here is the doctor's mother. This was she was on Paget for five years and alendronate and no fall. And this is what was the fracture. So here again there was because of the bowing and because of the pagets, there was a big femoral bow which was there. So there was no option except to do this. So we did this and put in a medial medial um, BMP protein for whatever it was worth, and then we fixed it up and fortunately this healed up. Fortunately this healed up. And I know even today this is completely healed up. But because of the pagets, again because of the bow, bowing of the femur, we couldn't do the nailing. Now lesson, subtrox fractures do not tolerate biomechanical inadequacy. Subtrox fractures do not tolerate gap. Bone grafting does not make up for the non-contact at the fracture site. Simpler the subtrox fracture, more the chances to fail. Implant choice is critical. Revise early. Asudip, anything urgent? Then it will need only one hour. नहीं तो उसको एक घंटे का चार्ज करो एक डेढ़ घंटे का दो घंटे का नहीं मानता आज ही आज ही ठीक है ये आई एम ऑन द आई एम ऑन द वेब जस्ट यू जस्ट मॉडिफाइड एडिशन ऑफ टेरी पेरेटाइट फॉर अ लोकल अल्ट्रासाउंड फॉर व्हाटेवर इट इज वर्थ ऑन डे वन the Society Bone Builder Research ACB have task force reported an incidence of two per one lakh cases per year after two years of pre phosphorate use, increasing to 78 per one lakh cases per year after eight years of use. So two years is considered to be the safest because then the, their, their incidence is very, very low. If you increase for more, nowadays it has been almost established that we give it only for two years to maximum three years. Earlier, we didn't know that, so the patients continued for a long time. There is no dose response in relationship on the basis of higher bisphosphonate dosage. However, there appears to be a dose response relationship on the basis of the cumulative dose over time, which can be explained by the fact that bisphosphonate binds to the bone for many years. Now today, my attitude is, if there is a subtrochanteric fracture with alendronate, I will do the nail and a supplementary plate because I feel this is the one which you must and it will take long time to heal. And that's the reason that only nailing may not suffice. So I do a supplementary plate. If you're doing a non-union, even the bone graft from the alendronate fracture may not be adequate. So almost majority of the times for a non-union, I use a PMP protein. So it is expensive, but I feel that autograft is hardly of any use. You may use a allograft for whatever it is worth. Sir, may I disturb for a while? Sir, yes, yes. I, I haven't have any experience of nailing or plating a fracture with alendronates. Is it easy to drill a hole in the, the alendronate uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. affected bone? The alendronate is nothing like a marble bone. It is a normal bone except intramedullary sclerosis, which I described and showed you in those. And then is it how easy it is to drill a hole for plating? No, it is, it is a bone. Except if you hit that sclerotic area. Okay. Okay, sir. Maybe you want to add up anything? No. Okay. No. Sir, I have a question, sir. Sir, uh, you told that for uh, subtrochanteric fracture, uh, it is best to use a nail along with a plate. Yeah. 
Sir, this thing you go in the first go, initial first uh, surgery? Yeah, because these are the ones which are very, very notorious for a non-union. And along with this, uh, uh, also we should use allografts. Allograph if needed, yes. If needed I, or if needed or routinely, we should use. I think we should use it. We so should obviously, use. obviously, it look it looks obvious that we should stop alendronates once we see a fracture. That is, that is necessary, and you have to start teddy There is no, there is no question about it. Okay, sir. And with periparatides, you don't... Never, never is continued, obviously, and they have to put on a teriparatide. And on teriparatide, you don't come across such type of fractures then? Never, never. Okay. But it has been reported with the... Uh, which is the new one? Six, every six monthly we take an injection. Denosumab. Yeah, no. Denosumab. It has been... Solentronic acid. It has been reported by some of the people in Denusana, but I think still it is not as frequent. Anybody wants to ask anything or add anything? Sir, okay. similar practice with the uh, Asha Petrosis, uh, how will you manage it, sir? Why it is stopped? Sir, sir hello? hello? Hello, sir. Sir, sir, sir osteopetrosis fracture, uh, your implant of choice, sir, in osteopetrosis. Osteopetrosis has nothing to do with the alendronate fracture. Osteopetrosis is a, is a, is a bone which you, you find difficult in healing. Now, here, what Dr. Deshpande was asking, it can be a problem. But I have never faced that I have never been able to do it. You may not be able to do a nailing because in osteopetrosis, medullary cavity may be obliterated quite a lot. But the plating, you it is not it is not issued. I think we have already discussed about it, how to do the drilling of the osteopetrosis. Anybody remembers? We have, I'm, I'm sure we have spoken about. Anybody remembers? Dr. Dilson, you were there? Probably I missed that class then. Yes, Nagy, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. You have, you have to use, uh, keep large number of different sizes of drill beads, especially stainless steel drill beads, and start with the uh, smaller size and then go on increasing, go on cooling down the drill bit, take out the debris, and... Uh, once you reach adequate size, you'll be able to do it, but it takes time and the steel drill bit is better. As I state, the drill bit is Stage break. drilling, yeah. Stage drilling. Why it breaks, I'll tell you. Yeah. You drill it. You drill it, you go one cortex. And the dust which collects in the fluke makes the drill ineffective. So the, the idea is you drill a little, you take it out. And the flute, which is filled up with the bone dust, you wash it out, you clean it out with the needle and everything. So again, the flute becomes fresh. Again, Asim, you, Asim, you said steel drill bits, stainless steel drill bits. That's better. Okay. Is it stronger? Yes. But any of the drill bits, they will get blocked by the new bone. Yeah. By the, the, flutes, by the, the flutes will get blocked, so we have to clean the flute. Go on, wash, uh, wash it out. Also. Yeah. Twenty. Don't go on expecting to drill like a normal bone. At one go, you will be able to drill. You will not be able to drill. Drill it, take it out, clean it out, the flute, again drill it. So I find that one drill for a plate, one screw which you have to put in, minimum three times you will have to take out the drill and push it in. Occasionally, it may be four times. And as you said, if in case you break the drill, then it's a hell of, it's a, hell of a problem to take it out. Sir, how, how good is the hold in then? How good is the hold of screws then after drilling of such? It's fairly, it's fairly good. It's fairly good. In osteopetrosis or any of them, it's not much of a problem. Okay, I think I will show a case. Hmm. I, if does I it, it, does it engage into the screw threads, sir? Threads of the screw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not the problem at all. No. Next one is, sir, you have to wash the hole also. Lots of dust will come out. Every time you'll have to clean the hole, 
where you build a drill bit. Okay. And you have to clean the flute. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. Sir, you mentioned that BMP should be used, sir. Yeah. So, uh, BMP is available. I, I've never seen BMP, sir. That's why I wanted to know about it. I stay, I stay <laughs> South Bombay. Where everything is, whatever is available anywhere in India is available in Bombay. But it cannot be available in your part of the world because it is very expensive. Minimum it is one and a half lakh. One and, one and a half lakh about. One and a half lakh for a smallest part. If you want to four pieces, then it is 180. So it is all cost effectiveness and the cost in the patient and everything is the one which you will have to look for. Okay, here is the osteopetrosis. Okay, here is the one. See how I have tried to label it. Osteopetrosis, bilateral neck fever, difficult patient. Now I know difficult patient means that girl and that family. I remember now all the time. Here was the patient who came to me like. They were operated upon earlier by somebody. And uh, in order to correct this, they had done the osteotomy. Bilateral osteotomy was done. And this is how he came. And, they, and as you can see, this screw which is shifted is now hitting there. While on both the sides it is hitting, but you can see on this side it has already cut through and there is a fracture. This is supposed to have healed up. This is osteopetrosis, typical. You can see even the surgeon has been able to put four screws. Now, how will you treat this? Young girl, young girl of I think about 24, just about to be married or married. You can see the bone loss. <laughs> Bolo, I seen you have seen this case? Yeah, I think I have seen it bilateral. Bolo, anybody, anybody wants to? Go? Sir, it should be a fixed angle implant, angle uh, blade plate with osteotomy with fibular graft to fill the void. Is me fibular graft dalay ek ek to nailed o screw dalay ka itna problem hai. To fibular graft kida dalay ga? Okay, I proceeded here. Sir. Yes. Osteotomy blade plate. Yes. Uh, with bone grafting, sir. Either bone graft kya karega either. Mm. Because even the iliac the, is also... Iliac bone also is disease. It's not... Mm -hmm. BMP, sir, you yellow grafting. Mm -hmm. come to what I did it here. Now here you can see, after so much of abduction, I could get the bone and this thing in contact. So I did this abduction osteotomy. I did so much of uh, the, the, the neck which is supported here. So this is what it became like this. And there it is day one. This is 11 months. And this is still going on. And uh, yeah, I think I, I, I missed out the other one. Now what happened is this became longer. She was a young girl it became longer. So once it became longer, I told the patient that this is the only way I could get the things together. So this was the one which was like this. So I said, suppose it's like when we do the valve, the limb will be reasonably well equalized. So once I went through this, I went to the opposite side. I did the abduction of osteotomy. And these old screws which were broken down, I kept them. And did the abduction osteotomy. So it became an abduction. So now the length slightly equalized the patient was now comfortable. Otherwise, the patient in the relative, such a long leg here and a short leg here, it was difficult. And this is 11 months. And here she is walking. And this is perfectly all right. She has become. So this is the one which is I feel is the treatment for osteopetrosis. And this osteopetrosis, as I mentioned to you, you will have to go through 
two or three times really all the time and there only you will be able to really treat this patient adequately. Any questions on this? Yes? Which drill bit you use, sir? Sorry. Sir? Sorry? Which, which, which drill bit you use? As I said, by and large, you need the sharp drill bit. The stainless steel ones which do not break so easily. So most of the time I use the stainless steel drill points. But as you said, you'll have to keep many drill points, clean it up. As we have already discussed this, uh, Dr. Gadi Gune, you'll have to clean up the flute repeatedly. Sir, I have a question, sir. Bolo, bolo. Sir, uh, just the uh, second last exercise was shown, sir. Ah. Uh, pre, uh, pre, pre uh, inter, just post-op and a total final recovery, ka hai, sir. Yeah. What is the duration, time duration between this healing time, sir? Around 11 months. Uh, okay, sir. It's a very slow process. Sir, uh, this is fourth... No. Sixth, sixth, sixth exercise. Yeah, it is, it is 11 months. 11 months. This is mm. 5 months and this is 11 months, you can see. Okay, sir. Yes. Thank sir, you, one you. sir, one query. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, how, what the duration of therapeutic therapy, therapy in uh, a lindonate fracture? To total LN noted fracture is LN donate is given for osteoporosis. So osteoporosis, whenever you give today, what is the protocol is two years or so maximum three years, we give LN donate and then put the patient on to teriparatide. So teriparatide, it is here, it is for osteoporosis. So it will have to continue for two years. We are talking about LN donate fracture. Please do not confuse with osteopetrosis. Yes, sir, in endurance fracture only. Yeah. Two years, therapeutic time. Oh. Yes. Hello? Hello? Yes, ask anything before we go ahead? Sir, so, can I ask something? I had... Yes. Uh, yes, sir, one can answer, you go ahead. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. I just uh, came to know uh, about the diamond drill bits which are used in osteoporosis. What is your opinion on this? Sorry, sorry about that. Diamond drill bits. Huh? Diamond drill bits. Diamond, diamond tip drill bit. Yeah. Now, this is the one which is available into the, it is a diamond tip, they call it. It is sharp. Mm -hmm. It can be used. It is available with the hardware. And uh, some of the some of the people keep this. I always used to have this sort of a drill point because they are very sharp, but they also break down very fast. So whichever drill point you use it, uh, the, in osteopetrosis, breaking down is very, very, very frequently if you are not very careful. If you get used to uh, really drilling osteopetrosis, you know very well that you drill a little, come out, drill a little, come out. And if you do that, then only it will not break. But if you are not aware of it, you go on and on and on, it is bound to break down. Okay. Diamond, okay. diamond tip one, which is also, it really breaks down much more faster. Because it is not okay. stable. Sir, one question, sir. Bolo, bolo. What is the normal duration of teriparatide you uh, use for post-op period? How long it can uh, you give to the, this patient? Eight second. I think your question, I will reframe it. How long Hello. is you teriparatide for an osteoporosis patient? Yes, sir. Because on Ellen Donate. Then I no, Ellen Donate, sir, you told that two to three years maximum it can yeah, be... After you stop Ellen Donate, you will have to give osteoporosis treatment because Ellen Donate doesn't cure osteoporosis. It yes, got it. The problem. Okay, sir. You have to put it on to teriparatide or, or denusanab. Denusanab and teriparatide. And then donate almost work the same way. Mm -hmm. So teriparatide is the best option. For osteoporosis, teriparatide has to be used for two years. But two years. Teriparatide, if you are using it for a 
non-union younger patient as a as a bone healing stimulus, then it is used only for two months. Okay. Sir, where I noticed that... Wanted... Yes, sir. In osteopetrosis patient, you specifically put DHS over there bilaterally. So, with so abduction osteotomy. Osteotom. Yeah, abduction osteotomies. Uh, why not angle blade plates over there? Do you anticipate any difficulties in okay. inserting okay. the blades? The angle blade plate, if you have to hammer out that uh, bone in order to pass the plate plate, yeah. it's not that going to be easy. And to me, if I do the abduction osteotomy, I always use a DH. This is what I am used to. Okay. But yeah, I used to use an angle plate plate. But that's fine. I have, I have no objection to it. But this is what I am used to and I continue with this all the time. <laughs> okay. Sir, another okay. point. How long yeah. do you how long it took you to put a triple reamer for DHS? Because see, Very good. we are we are same. talking about drilling of a small drill hole. Say wow. same, same way as Dr. Nagy mentioned. You put the guide wire, you put a cannulated small drill, bigger drill, bigger drill, bigger drill, and ultimately the drill of a triple reamer. And triple reamer drill, the, the outer uh, outer reaming is just the last. Because you, it will take a long time to really fill it out. And again, you will have to, because the triple rimmer is never sharpened. You, I also sharpen the triple rimmer periodically, every year or so. I need to sharpen. But 99.9% .9 of the people never sharpen triple rimmer. So that is also going to be blood. But that is the one which is going to be a slow process. So that was that was the reason I asked you that question about the DHS. Sir. Like for angle blade plate, if we can manage putting like making some uh, drill holes through the uh, these drills, 4.5 drills or 3.5 drill bits, 3.2 drill bits, and passing an osteotome on that and then inserting a blade, it seems little uh, easier way to uh, get away with than than doing that like all the triple reaming and everything. Will hammering cause additional fracture? You don't need an easier way to operate. But the way which you are used to, it is easy. Whatever way you do it is going to be easier. Uh -huh. And sir, with your skill, you can do any or any surgery. Ishpande, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. What, what I have observed is, at least with the Indian uh, implants, doesn't have to be really pushed hard. Uh, you use the triple reamer and then that just see the two hole plate whether it's fitting nicely or not, going smoothly or not. Most of the time, you don't have to really push hard with the triple reamer. Okay, sir. Fortunately or unfortunately, never had an opportunity to fix such type of fracture. <laughs> <laughs> you book OT for five hours. Yeah. I got it. Do you want to add up anything? Nothing, sir. Dr. Arigune, are you there? Okay. Proceed further. Bugs, bugs do not die only with antibiotics in bone. Here was the talk I gave. The first talk of the similar thing was... Uh, Anyway, something is uh, it is about the post post surgical infection. Bugs don't die only with antibiotic in bone. Infection in chest, abdomen, etc. Treatment is only antibiotic. But in bones. Only antibiotic is not enough to eradicate infection. What is the treatment of infected plate or a nail? Every dead tissue is removed, wash, 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 irrigation. Then also it is not enough, so we put local antibiotic beads or antibiotic nail. And then with culture sensitive antibiotic parenterally for six weeks. Do we ever think that established infected plate or a nail? Infection will be eliminated with antibiotics without local surgery. We never think of that. While chest infections and all, we know that we do only that. 
but bombardment with antibiotic reduce the high load of bacteria reducing inflammatory reaction due to bacteria in the body so that temporary body is back to normal defense mode where it can function normally and treated bone can heal up in spite of infection once antibiotics is stopped infection will decrease those dormant and bacteria which are not killed but are quiet will again start multiplying and pus and symptoms of the infection will be seen again with low signs and without much symptoms i'll i'll put it here the question which i asked so many times uh if the patient had an infection and it was detected two weeks later when the patient came for a, with a small pus bead onto the wound two weeks after the operation the first question i ask is how long was the antibiotic given post operative and 99% of the time it is 8 weeks 8 days 10 days 12 days now if i can ask somebody how long is the post operative antibiotic regime today i think we have been through this but still can i can i ask this question to somebody who is not answered up till now uh hey. yes sir i would like to answer that uh, as discussed uh, by you earlier if a patient is not catheterized and uh, has a closed fracture then three doses of antibiotics uh, a third generation cephalosporin and uh, uh, an aminoglycoside and if the patient has a catheter then uh, five doses and no oral antibiotic given later yeah to me and that's not correct that's not correct to me it's not correct the campbell specifically mentions that catheter has got nothing to do with, to do with uh, antibiotic use antibiotic dosage. actually if catheter is there the urine is draining out so even less chance of infection maximum three dosage minimum dose pre operative okay it is what is antibiotic regimen catheter is everything has nothing to do with it and repeat after 3 hours if surgery is long that is mandatory so when do you add an amino glycoside you repeat the antibiotic on the table on the table if it is more than 3 hours sir the antibiotic which you give with you is within 1 hour of the surgery yes, most important antibiotic which you repeat, repeat i think for and you repeat what you said just now yeah i said it is to be given within 1 hour of the surgery starting so no, wrong you are wrong 30 minutes okay it was given for the infusion the surgery is given the surgery is applied you recommend you recommend within 1 hour sir it has to be before the incision is made yeah it has to be before the incision is made it has to be before the incision is made it has to be before the incision is made noise is there but here ah ha who is there so the antibiotics protocol is before the surgery ke inflation or half an hour before the surgery if there is no tuning so how the system today is not working okay for our x-ray in the laptop thing you know somebody is there from the doctor is there सर प्लीज सर सर सम बैकग्राउंड नॉइस इज देयर सर वी हैव टू आस्क क्वेश्चन सर Like after that, after this, one hour, one before one hour, there's some background noise is there. If can. Okay, now I muted all. So whoever wants to ask, unmute yourself and answer and ask the question. Yes. 
Sir. Sir. AO recommendation is the first dose of antibiotic should be given within one hour prior to the within within the span of one hour. It may right. be after, not after the surgery started. No, no, before the surgery started. Right. You mentioned within one hour of surgery. Yeah, within one hour of the surgery. I think that within one hour, is when you start the surgery, you should give it. It is what no, it no, no. implies. Anyway, what you probably you meant is it should be given before the surgery starts. Yes. Yes, fine. Perfectly all right. I meant it right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. doctor. Sir. So Sir, I want to ask, you told that the best time is before tonic inflation, we should give first dose of antibiotic. And max, maximum we can give, give three doses. And if the duration of surgery is more than three hours, you can repeat one do dose after th if surgical time is more than three hours. Okay. So what you generally use as a cephalosporins or uh, which is the combination, uh, antibiotic combination you use? Sir? Cephalosporin and... Uh... Amikacin or gentamicin, with a, which can cover the gram positive, gram negative. Okay. It means uh, cephalosporin with amino glycoside combinations. Sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Single dose amikacin, amikacin, 750 milligram. Single dose, sir. Single dose amikacin, 750 is safer than 500 milligram BD. Okay, sir. And uh, and more effective. One day. Sir, amikacin, you use for all to describe. I work in. Four hospitals. Out of it, three are five star, and the fourth is four star. So, wh what is your recommendation about government hospital? We are working. Come to Hospital, 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 it is to be, because, if I talk about reliance, which is a hospital, and the house surgeon, he is confused all the time, who gives how much. Somebody gives for, like me, he, he gives for 24 hours, other somebody gives till catheter is removed, somebody else is, gives till the time patient is discharged, somebody gives till the, after the patient discharge on oral treatment, so he is, poor chap is confused all the time. In seven star hospitals, also mm -hmm. in five star hospitals, also exactly the same thing happens. Till people are not convinced that three doses of antibiotic is enough, and that is the only way in which you can treat. It is not that the if you give more, it is safe. As a matter of fact, it is unsafe because when you give more, it is suppressing the antibody, the, the 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 whole infection which is starting. And if the infection is started, you suppressed it. Then after 10 days, this is exactly what I was asking. After 10, 12 days, if the, you were given the antibiotics for 10 days, after the 10, 15 days, stop the antibiotics, you will start the pus coming out. Pus coming out. Well, that's the yes, sir. I, I did an ankle surgery today. Yes, sir. Three hours job. Yes, sir. One shot at 7.45, yes, at 11 o'clock just when closer was starting and we'll get last dose at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the evening. That's it. Not even 24 hours. Uh, sir, uh, if I may divert to a topic a little, uh, apart from giving prophylactic antibiotics, the second source of infection would be the skin. So I was under uh, Dr. Rajendra Chandak, sir, uh, for okay. fellowship. And the practice there was, sir, that uh, we initially use a betadine preparation with an IODO4 or uh, an IO prep yeah. and uh, wait for five to seven minutes for the betadine action time. Then we clean it with spirit, 70% ethyl alcohol. And once that is dried off, we apply cutacept, another uh, alcohol preparation. And then the practice is that every 15 to 20 minutes, we can apply 1% uh, uh, concentration of betadine over the skin as, or as and when possible. Uh, is there anything else that can be done to ensure that we do not uh, or this we cover anything else possible? Debatable. Even this is debatable. Okay. What you spoke about it, not universally practice. I don't practice that way. I grave the patient and that's it. And my infection rate is, is hardly anything. 
sir any role of uh, betadine drip uh, iodine drip no it has been proved very very convincing no. that it has no role at all very sir there is a lecture by javed parvezi american academy lecture he goes on talking about the, those five six minutes lecture is on the so, so i think i think it yeah. really works yeah it doesn't work the important is don't mess it up with the soft tissues inside okay sir if the dead soft tissue then the infection chances are very high uh, so, so how is your clear cut dissection it is the one which is really decide the infection keeping tissue moist with 3% saline mixed with uh, betadine 3% solution of bit, uh, normal saline betadine helps keeping them moist and maybe some antiseptic action and release tunica before you start the closer achieve good hemostasis and before you close spend some time in debriding all the dead tissue all of us uh, leave some dead tissue there some muscle dies when retracting and so take out all that muscle uh, don't leave out good tissue excise yeah divided uh, radical ruthless anything which is not bleeding get rid of there and there thank you thank you sir to suppress the infection to temporary inactive level will help bones to heal now here is the after debridement and six week antibiotic patient reoperated with the repeat construction here is the patient who came like this and it was operated upon sinus occurred after 10 days of second operation cleaned out everything became all right three months time this is what was the situation bone grafted so those antibiotics do not kill organism it can keep them quiet for the fracture to heal so in a infected uh, infected bone we continue antibiotics for at least 4 to 6 weeks depending upon the uh, whichever the protocol you are but now now here is the case i don't know why am i talking about this nw infection here is the case infected beans and we started small discharge in sinus but the fracture healed up as you can see very well the fracture is of the small discharge in sinus if you can suppress it with antibiotics it it can still heal up so there is no question of really you know infected bone you got to give antibiotics for a long time you can see it over here there was a sinus but then the ultimately the fracture healed up and the things become perfectly alright because there was a well well uh, um control of the stability part of it so we can use the property of antibody to suppress the infection so that the bones proceed to heal at times in knee replacement when the infection occurs the patient is not fit enough for a whole second stage to two stage surgery which is treated with antibodies induced suppression to carry on with no pain some of there are lifetime antibodies now now i think i want to basically come uh, sir 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 uh, Uh, before that also i have asked sometimes La last slide sir uh but yes yeah, uh, if you are operated we have given and yes, only one day and three months things were okay and patient comes with a sinus or uh, signs of infection at three and a half months do you debride them or what do you do then three and a half month i feel is too late to get away with debridement no but he was all right during all this time Yeah, if the if the if the if the fixation is solid. Yeah, by that time fracture has settled through. So fracture has started it. Then I'll debride it, put him on antibiotics. There may be a small sinus, but still the fracture will heal up. That is exactly what I am talking here. Yeah. Now, any idea how do you get the sensitivity of the infected joint? anybody wants to know i think this is a typical endoclinic experience if the joint is infected or if the fracture is infected and it comes to you <coughs> majority of the time people have already bombarded them with antibiotics in order to get the antibiotic culture abstain antibiotic for minimum of 3 weeks before taking the culture sample 
now into the competitive practice quite a lot of surgeons do not really go through this because if you suppress the patient maybe and you tell the patient that don't take antibiotic come after three weeks he is going to go somewhere else and he say are how can it be you will be doing you will go through amputation and different of opinion and this is not very easy to do it in a private practice setup the culture sample should be taken from the tissue of the wall and not from the exudate to get a culture positive most of the people take a pus out pus is a dead tissue um, so it may not give you the culture all right so you take it out from the wall of the infected area and that is the one which is more likely to get the culture positive and culture it doesn't get grow in two days keep that specimen for 15 days before which the positive culture may not be obtained so some of those slow growing organisms they may take 15 days to culture now i think i'll tell you my experience about it in just look hospital i operated a patient in the evening for a emergency uh, and i sent the culture and culture became negative so i was most surprised why the culture is negative so i went to the pathology department and i asked them the full detail of how the culture and everything was done and they tell us your specimen came at 7 o'clock in the evening so it was kept in the fridge and next day morning 7 o'clock when the biochemist came it was culture it was put into the agar medium and by that time the bugs had died out so this is how it is and majority i am talking of the five star hospitals and I honestly i have not been able to change it so all what i can do is now do the surgery in the morning part don't do it in the evening so that there is a possibility of the culture occurring immediately and then i have to phone up the friendly pathologist who is on duty to tell them that i am sending the culture please immediately to put onto the culture medium and then only it can grow yes asim sir uh, i was trying to say the same thing that we should communicate with the uh, microbiologist in the department they will put it in different media if, if we give them the feedback what we are sending then the method is different they put it in and ultimately it is very important you have we have to talk to them that what we want you how i solve the problem yeah ultimately i solve the problem i went to the pathology department the friendly pathologist who was willing to help he says sir of all what we can do is we we'll give you the culture media so you ask for the culture media and you inoculate the pus which you get in the culture media and and you will will give you the access to the oven or wherever they put it so you put it in the oven and yeah. next morning we'll go ahead and do it that is the easiest way to do it but otherwise if they put it in the fridge and next morning you you did as if it is a you are putting a bangle you you are putting a banana in the fridge so that it can remain it doesn't remain there and the culture if it does not go in two days time again it was then difficult for me to to be the pathologist to argue so i had to show them the reports of for endoclinic would say it very clearly that if it doesn't grow in two days time it is a possibility slow growing organism which can grow up to 15 days so if it doesn't grow just don't say that there is no growth and there is no organism please put it for 15 days and at the end of 15 days you declare that there is no organism and hardly ever it happens that there is no organism at the end of 15 days yes doctor somebody has raised your hand yes sir what is your protocol for antibiotics in an open fracture sir basically open fracture i think it has been very well spoken by dr din daya yeah yes sir he has, he has beautifully talked about it the maximum he gives is till 5 days and okay. otherwise if he really he is doing the primary closer then he still gives it only for those two only for three doses five days is only if he is going to keep it open and then the plastic surgeon is going to come and close down the wound once on the fourth fifth day he closes down the wound they stop the antibiotic akshay okay. did a did a compound by condyler shattered tibia about three days back so i ex extended the wound it, it was about 1 and 1/2 cm i extended it i spent the whole knee i restored the articular 
continuity and I have not used even uh, screws. I have used only three or four K wire to uh, align the joint. So my articular block is fairly decent now and antibiotics were given only for 24 hours. Next day morning, they were stopped. Patient has gone home and he will come back for definitive surgery around two weeks. And again, 24 hours antibiotic will be given. And then we see what happens. This practice is now followed in our country unless pet department is in front. And pet department, some of those pathologists are so very adamant and they feel they are professors, they know everything very well. So you got to need a friendly chat with those pathologists. If you try to argue, argue with them, it doesn't work. Because they have in their own small hello, they are, they are being pampered so much. So you got to really put them down, possibly friendly ways, show them the articles and then they will accept it. Otherwise, if you try to order, they will not accept it. It's a very peculiar experience I have in all pathology departments. Under antibiotic bombardment, bugs will remain quiet and will not proliferate. Once three weeks antibiotics are stopped, it starts multiplying in infection is in the wall and not in the exudate. Now I come to our Indian scenario. How this behavior of bacteria against antibiotics affect immediate infection in post-operative period? Now, if I talk about immediately, patient, how do you detect the immediate post-operative infection? Anybody? Akshay, can I ask you? Akshay Pushkar? You are muted. You are muted. Uh, sir, out of sir. proportional pain. Sorry? Sir, yeah, whenever right. there is an increase in the pain, in spite of getting relief from the pain, when there is a severe increase in the pain, it shows that there is some chance of infection. And in addition, we can go ahead with the blood investigations like CRP, CSR, and serum uh, calcitonin also. How about, tell me, tell me each investigation. What is your 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 uh, observation? You ask for CRP. First, we see the wound. If there is a redness and severe pain at the fracture site or uh, at the operative site. It indicates that there is a chance of infection. So we can go ahead with the... For the redness, you miss the bus. Redness will appear when? Sometimes there may be, may not be, but the increase in the pain is the only indication where we can suspect the infection. Hello? Sir, if there is fever, tachycardia, raised CRP, ESR, and count CBC sir. Fourth, fifth day fever is the most important, sir. along with pain, as sir. Rajan sir said. And fever with high TLC. Polymorph. The patient who was able to move the joint very well is not doing it that well. That loss of function is very, very important. Mm. Sir, fever with high CRP and leukocytosis. Namaste, sir. Namaskar. Namaste, Guruji. Namaste, kaise ho? Namaste. Bas. Bas. मेरा बीच में थोड़ा लाइन चली गई थी इसलिए डिस्कनेक्ट हुआ था मैं हम्म गाड़ी को नहीं सर नमस्ते सर मीटिंग में जाना नमस्ते हमने थोड़ा तन्ना सर से बात किया आप आने के लिए तन्ना सर इज वेरी वेल विलिंग असीम सर इज विलिंग हां अभी आपका सपोर्ट चाहिए आशीर्वाद चाहिए फिर हम लोग आगे बढ़ते हैं बिल्कुल मेरा आशीर्वाद कैसे सुन मैं सर आप इतने सीनियर आप ऐसा क्या बात करते हो मैं सदा आपके साथ में हूं नहीं वो सर आप बात बातें बहुत बड़ी करते हो आप दास है बोलते हैं ऐसा मत कहो कब रखेंगे बोलो नहीं अहमदनगर में इसलिए... सर टेंपरेचर कितना रहता है अप्रैल में अप्रैल में 
सर अराउंड थर्टी फाइव रहेगा सर मैंने कुछ ज्यादा नहीं है नहीं इतना ज्यादा नहीं है सर लाइक विदर्भा अहमदनगर इज दैट वे वेरी आई मीन इक्वी होकल देर इज देर इज नेवर टू हाई नेवर टू लो द रेन्स आर नेवर टू हाई नेवर टू लो द एयर इज ड्राई इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल स्टेशन आल से देखो सर दो मेरे प्रोग्राम से एक है नौ और दस को नागपुर को सर आ रहे हैं उसमें भी हाँ और दूसरा एक औरंगाबाद में प्रोग्राम है हमारा एक तीस और एक मई को तीस अप्रैल और एक मई औरंगाबाद में क्या है सर वो आईओ एम ओ ए इन्फेक्शन एंड नेलिंग पार्ट अच्छा हाँ, तो सर, इस, हमको, हमको ये भी देखना पड़ेगा हाँ, एक तो एमओ ए का ब्लेसिंग चाहिए महाराष्ट्र और हाँ, तो वो दे देंगे ब्लेसिंग का कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं अपन नहीं है, है मैं अभी हमारे लोकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के प्रेसिडेंट सेक्रेटरी को बात, बात किया हूँ हाँ, तो ये दो डेट छोड़ गए मई में ज्यादा टेम्परेचर रहता क्या उधर नहीं मई इज लिटिल नॉट टू बी एक्सेप्टेड मई इज टू बी डिफर्ड तो ये दो दो तारीख जो है उसमें देखो आप दो तारीख को यदि नौ दस छोड़ के और तीस अप्रैल एक मई छोड़ के सर तन्ना सर आ रहे तो हमारा टारगेट ऑडियंस औरंगाबाद भी है पुना भी है और फेलो कलीग्स भी है वो कोई बात नहीं अपन एक दिन का इट इज ए गेट टूगेदर आ गया ख्याल में एंड गम्मत जम्मत एजुकेशन सर हाँ कैसा है कॉन्फ्रेंस बंद पड़ गया क्या अपना प्राइवेट चैट ही चालू हो नहीं नहीं ये क्या करेंगे अपन यानी जितने भी अपने पार्टिसिपेंट्स है उसमें से कितने लोग आते हैं वो देखना पड़ेगा पहले ग्रुप पे यदि पचास लोग भी आते हैं समझो तो देन इट इज ए गुड और पचास लोग अपने अहमदनगर आर्थोपेटिक सोसाइटी कैसे सौ लोग हो जाते तन्ना सर का चालू हो गया स्क्रीन अभी हाँ। हम दोनों बाद में बात करते हैं सर हाँ, ओके सर मेरे को असीम सर चाहिए असीम सर को तो मैं असीम सर को तो मैं चार्टर फ्लाइट भेजूंगा नहीं नहीं असीम सर आ जाते हैं गवाले भी आ जाता और वो सब लोग आ जाते जी आप बोलो जी हुकुम करो आप आदेश करो हाँ देश पांडे सर आपको कौन मना करता जी सर आप ऐसा बोल के चिकनी चुपड़ी बातें करके सामने वाले को चने के पेड़ पे चढ़ाते हैं <laughs> नहीं 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 भाई कब मैं नेगी कभी चने के चाट पे चढ़ा था क्या मैं <laughs> नेगी आसिम सर चने खाते रहते हैं कॉन्फ्रेंस <laughs> मीटिंग के टाइम चलो लेट स्टार्ट विथ सर <laughs> इंसिजन इज टू मी more important the incision becomes tenser incision becomes tense doctor sahab ye wo to bahut late ho jayega it is the awareness of the about the infection that you are suspecting some infection post operative infection so what is the round on the first second third and fourth day you are you want me to tell del day wise sir say the Fever and systemic symptoms will be the first, sir. Hello, Fever. how are you? Maja, maja, maja. In the social round, nothing orthopedically you need to do. Fever, See. loss of huh, redness. Redness, to baad, baad ab baad me aayega, doctor sir. On the fourth day, the question I think somebody somebody properly said just now, pain which was reducing. It has increased. Yeah. That pain which has increased is now a warning signal. Then you ask him, "Is he on analgesic?" Still, the pain is increased. Now, on that fourth day, the pain has increased. How will you proceed now? Then, 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 Fever infection is suspected. I would definitely like to take the patient to operation theater, explore everything, take out the culture from the deep sides, from the implant side, wash, lavage. Yes, but you are jumping the queue. What is your indication of taking the patient to the theater? 
Sir, the infection, if I suspect infection, sir, I would not like to delay. That is how I think I have saved at least three or four knee replacements done by me. Sir. I always take them to the theater as early as possible. Re-explore, give wash and put drain and suture. Sir. Can I request you, Deshpande? Yes, sir, please. Your so, Adesh DJ. I questioning one by one. Then I think all of us will learn. Fourth day, there is pain. Hmm. How do you proceed? Are you going to take him up straight away in the theater? No, sir. No. So, how will you proceed? So, do not start operating. I, up till now, the decision of operation is not done. Okay. So, so then... There is pain on the round patient. Say, sir, kal se jada dukta hai. Now, what is your... How your mind works and what are you going to do? Sir, uh, support the limb. Then... Uh, Give some painkillers if the pain gets reduced, fine enough. Otherwise, would like to aspirate the wound, send it for culture and sensitivity, sir. See the color of the aspirate. Start with. Sorry, sir. Same, you want to add up something? I have asked you. Yes, sir. Agree with Dr. Dr. Deshpande's answer. I will also definitely take the patient to the operation theater if uh, the patient is not relieved by ordinary analgesic uh, after the pain has increased. And in that situation, it is better to do a exploration of the wound and see directly what is going on. Dr. Yes, sir. Dr. Yes, sir. My question, I think you have not heard, you were busy. On the fourth day, patient has a pain. Yes, sir. Now, what is your protocol? How do you go ahead? So, I will... <clears throat> suppose if there are pain, I will start with the analgesic and observe. And if that pain doesn't subside even after giving analgesic also, then I will suspect that there is a, something is going wrong inside. Exactly. So, fourth day, there is... Yes, Asim, you want to add up something? Sir, by and large, I take out the parastamol from the medicines he is receiving, one. Yes. Get my CBC and quantitative CRP on that day. And you can take 24 hours to make up your mind whether you want to explore that patient. By next day, you will be very sure. So that decision, you note down the warning sign become vigilant, I take out the parastamol from the prescription board and order first set of investigation and repeat it by, by tomorrow morning. So, by, by next 24 hours are crucial. I know that I have to do it now. Right. Next day, I will do it. Exactly what we practice. Yeah. There is pain. For the completion set, as for CBC, ESR, quantitative CRP. See the wound. Both <laughs> won't see redness, you won't see swelling, you won't see anything. See the wound. If there is bleeding, clean it out. That's all what you can do in the wound. Fifth day, your reports come. You repeat CRP for whatever it is worth. CRP is a very small indicator of action. The only indication of action is pain which is increasing, which was there it wasn't there for first three days. On the fourth day, the pain came. On the fifth day, the pain increased. Fever and everything else may not come. Pain increasing. Now is the suspicion. Now is the suspicion. Now you have to decide whether you want to act or you want to wait. If the pain in the wound is not increasing, but the pain in the wound is the same as it was on the fourth day and the fifth day, then you have a chance to find out still. See in the evening. If the pain again is there, it is increasing. Don't wait. Open it up. And then all what you did was I agree about. You do not depend on the CRP. You do not depend on the wound, anything, pus or swelling or anything. Because wound, if you wait for that, it means it is too late. And somebody was asking signs of inflammation on the wound is when the pus has come out. Then that is too late. 
ideal indication for a post operative exploration is fourth fifth and sixth day go down you will only find a bead of pus somewhere if you find or you will find a hematoma you may not find anything take the culture send it for culture culture sensitivity clean it out wash it out all clots and everything and any dead tissue you take it out see that the wound is stable and then close down the wound and come out and then antibiotic empirically whatever it is till the time you culture the port you wait the culture is now negative now you have a choice of continue antibiotics or wait because culture negative now you are in the position where probably do you there was no infection you gone in so you can still wait and do nothing and my experience is even if you gone down on fourth and fifth day you will avoid the infection 99% of the time you will avoid the infection but if you delay your decision making to 10th and 12th days then you miss the bus you delayed your decision that the wound is clean and that's the reason there is no infection then you miss the bus signs of infection on the wound will not develop so early and that is the one which you will not wait for i am only emphasizing on decision making the action all of us know gari gune uh, the doctor des pande all of them say it properly the action is open it up right till the time you have traveled during operation don't only open up superficial open up completely go right up to the plate or the nail or whatever you have done it and then debris it out wash it out clean it out uh, pulse lavage and everything is cleaned out after the first thing is taken for culture and then closed up most of the time you will culture something and then you will have to continue antibiotic for 4 to 6 weeks whatever you believe in any anybody has a question or anybody has any suggestion post operative infection to settle it is the it is not so delay it is if it has to occur it will occur within two or third day and it will manifest probably on the fourth day so that are the three or four days are very crucial to watch the patient and ask repeatedly whether you have increased your pain in a, uh, in during this course so if the infection never occurs in a post operative in after 10 days 3 weeks or so and so it is the it is the settlement of infection on second third day so that is the time third fourth and fifth day are the most crucial time to make a decision and decision does not depend on cbc doesn't depend on crp it <clears throat> depend on the wound condition i feel it only depends upon increasing pain i would rather open it up wrongly than to abstain from opening it up because that is the only way in which you can have a possibility of a 100% avoiding infection sir i have so one, the... i have two questions in my mind bolo, bolo. how to explain the patient that we are going to explore the wound under anesthesia because nowadays patient they may ask why you want to anesthesia for a dressing as as you had said in some of the conferences that you just ask the patient we are going to do a dressing but right. patients are very clever nowadays they will right. ask why anesthesia right. is required for that have you heard second, second question is after exploring if there is nothing we may come out but are there chances of reintroducing the infection over there and answer your first question yeah i have become very notorious for talking about it and gari gune and asim and everybody quotes me often in upon this in a nursing home setup it is much more easier to do it and i said it in my presentation sheet the patient i have to do the dressing since you don't get pain i have to i may give anesthesia some injection for you so that you don't get pain and i do the dressing take the patient for big dressing give anesthesia open it up do everything and then explain the patient we have done the we have done the dressing but we have to we have some there was a bleeding so we have to open up a little 
but we have done the dressing. Done the dressing, not done a second operation. You've done a big dressing at the end when the patient is going away. Don't charge for the, that second operation. Okay. The patient will forget everything and he will be cured and he will not have a problem. You see the one which I spoke about it in Delhi in All India meeting. I remember first time and quite a lot of people heard me and that is what they quote me again and again and again and again. It's possible to do it in a nursing home setup. Usually do everything. Take the, take, the, take the consent for the second operation. Big dressing or whatever you want to take about it. Take, bring the anesthetist. Don't do any, 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 any job which is going to be slip shot. But to the patient, if you tell operation karne ka hai dusra, then I think the second opinion and everything will come into picture. Yes, sir. This is how Indian patient you may have to handle Sir, can I ask a cross question to Dr. Rajendra? Yes, sir. Rajendra, what have you been doing? Same, I suppose. <laughs> As <laughs> guided by Tanna, sir, and you, yes, yes. you it don't has been guided by Tanna, sir. Repeatedly, it has been guided by Tanna, sir, since uh, in viral and every conferences. <laughs> so I was aware of that, so I was doing the same thing. But still, one of the patients asked me this question why you want anesthesia for the patient? Oh. That's why I. And if you want, you don't charge him. He doesn't bother about that. But if you charge him, like in a five-star hospital, they are charged. Where I work, they are charged for the second thing. So what I say is, I don't put my charges. And notionally, I reduce from my first operation fees something, he says, because whatever the hospital has to charge, but it does not cost you anything. You want to save your skin or whatever it is. Very true. Correct. Sir, can I, sir, as you said, like we need to be extra vigilant on that third, fourth, and fifth post-operative day and to watch for any increasing pain or recurrent pain. So, does that mean that we have to keep patients all the time in the hospital for five to seven days at least? No, no, you are right. Discharge? You are absolutely right. These days, we don't keep the patient. But Normally, in today's good. practice, I think we, we discharge patients on day three or day four. Day third day. Third day. Yeah, after first wound check, we discharge them if it, everything is fine. They phone me up. And they phone you up and then if you suspect anything, get the patient back. Okay. Because if you put him on, if they go to the GP, there is a small fever, there is pain, GP will start on antibiotics. Yes. During the whole cycle. Sir. So, I think that even the GP is involved in between. I instruct the GP and the patient. Please don't start antibiotics most operatively without asking. Him. Yes. Now, you want to present something, no? Yeah, yes, sir. sir. Before before you switch to some other topic of Dr. Gadegone, sir, can I present one case and seek your opinion also on that? No Relevant problem. To the same discussion. No problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll <coughs> share it. Sir, आपको आने का है तीस और इकतीस और एक में को औरंगाबाद. Sir, am I visible now? My screen is visible. वो गाड़ी को नहीं. No no. हमको मैसेज कर दे क्योंकि. No sir. मैसेज कर दिया मैंने आप देखते नहीं वही तो बड़ा प्रॉब्लम. मैसेज कर दिया मेल भी कर दिया. Three weekends of March and three weekends of April. At the moment I am committed. Okay. तो तुम हमको जल्दी मैसेज कर दे हम लिख लेगा ठीक या बोलो संजय यस सर आई एल प्रेजेंट वन केस सो दिस 26 ईयर ओल्ड बॉय अरे स्क्रीन शेयर करो स्क्रीन शेयर करो 
सर आपका कनेक्ट सर ऑलरेडी इट इज विजिबल सर इट इज विजिबल विजिबल नाउ इंडिकेशन ऑफ पोस्ट सेप्टिक सिक्वली एंड आर्थराइटिस बाय देन ही गिव्स अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ सम सेप्सिस एट द हिप टेन इयर्स अगो ही वॉज ड्रेन देन एंड देन वॉज डिस्चार्जिंग फॉर सम टाइम and then got settled but then later after 4 5 years he became painful and uh, for that indication i think septic arth- uh, post septic sequelae arthritis of the hip but quiescent then and he was uh, revised with the, this uncemented uh, hip now uh, he gives a history of like after uh, doing the thr within a month he developed a discharging sinus he was always painful post his tha and uh, he developed a sinus after uh, um a month or so am i visible still yes hello yes yes so this was his first x ray first post op x ray done in 2015 so this is how he was to begin with this is local skin condition because he has this developed this periprosthetic fracture now almost 2 uh, 3 weeks back and then he has been referred to me in this particular situation where he is having a bad skin at the buttocks then uh, active discharging sinuses at his uh, middle part of his earlier incision then distally at the middle uh, posterior thigh and then one sinus is there at the anterior aspect also so how to go about it what the one there is an infection which is a chronic infection no yes sir so first obviously the hardware will have to be out yes and you will have to clean out wash out the wound and the bone the weather that yes sir not distally whether it needs to be removed is anybody's get but you can feel it out that they take out without doing the osteotomy there you will be able to remove a fairly good amount of cement so put a uh, antibiotic cement spacer you are suggesting right and it is going to be a long drawn out treatment mhm i will not put on the x fix if possible antibiotic nail may be all right with something in the acetabulum to hold on and then second stage obviously you will have to do the revision here okay anybody else want to open the lateral wall of the femur almost appears to be dis- uh, looks to have disappeared totally osteoalized and that is the reason i am presenting yeah. this case here so as sir started like if you keep on lingering or keep on playing or keep on neglecting with the infection this is the thing which can happen which can go wrong with so something which would have been easily revised or easily managed on in a very early stages of the infection without uh, denying it that it is infected possibly uh, things would have been different today now the guy obviously has developed this periprosthetic fracture through those uh, the septic uh, osteolysis what he has uh, developed and the bone weakening over there and it was just a trivial twisting of his thigh that has given him this complication now He may need a he may need a tumor prosthesis later on. Yes, so the whole thing is has become a lot complicated now. It, so, it, a, anything else? What anyone wants to add to? Can I show what I did? Yeah, hold on, hold on. 
so uh, he has been managed just four days back and i am at the first stage I, what i have planned is like two stage revision for him and uh, this was the at the first stage four days back that is how i opened him and this was the scene like the whole uh, proximal lateral aspect of the proximal femur is totally osteolized there is no bone left over there just Why the thin mean? shell of a trochanter greater trochanter luckily is saved which possibly i will be able to i will be able to utilize it uh, for the future uh, the revision to uh, retention the abductors that is how uh, there was some some uh, osseo integration at the moving. distal what slide is not moving no no yeah we are able to see only the first x ray film first x ray only sorry yes sir yes. no, okay 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 one minute Sanjay, you have to share again. Yes, sir. So, am I visible now? I am visible. Yes. Yes, sir. This this particular X-ray is getting seen. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, this was a clinical picture. It yes, was multiple no. sinuses over there. a bad buttock skin because of the constant lying in the bed and this was like uh, at the first stage when i opened it up the whole proximal lateral femur is biased and uh, lost from there then the bone uh, there was little osseo integration on the medial side though that bone was not very healthy and almost sequestrated i had to osteotomize around that distal femur uh, stem and loosen that stem distally also and that is how the stem was removed it came out easily after that the trochanter area was totally loose there was no integra osseo integration over there the real challenge was like if you noticed on the x ray acetabulum was quite uh, well integrated like there was a good uh, healing at the acetabular shell so this is if you could see this particular implant which i am showing here there is something called as explant implant from a zimmer this is a, a, a instrument used for taking out the uncemented uh, acetabular cells and you gradually need to osteotomize your uh, well fixed acetabular cell all around rotate that particular implant and remove your uh, shell carefully so as to avoid any inadvertent fractures or any uh, inadvertent bone loss that will complicate your future revision otherwise so uh, this is how like uh, you need to remove that liner first so you need to literally uh, break it with the osteotomes or with the blade and then you will take out that liner and here you can see uh, shell screws were removed and after removing the screw using this explant instrumentation it has a sharp curved osteotome kind of a blade which comes in various sizes depending on the size of shell you have and there is like a, a, a pivot head given in between which you just keep in the shell and you rotate your uh, that uh, cutting blade all around the shell and remove the uh, bone bony connections with the cell and that is is out your uh, removal so that is how it was put and the shell was loosened from the posterior superior aspect mainly where the real uh, osseo integration happens this is another one trick like you can see there is at the superior aspect through that the screw hole only i have put this at for last uh, hammering out i used this small uh, punch which we use for this proximal tibial elevations so that punch you need to uh, you will be hammering at the superior as opposed to superior aspect and you will uh, take out the shell so that is how the shell was taken out
bone otherwise there were no septic cavities around the acetabulum so my question here is to uh, sir and all other seniors like whether uh, i should have, i could have retained this shell what i found is like there was no septic foci uh, underneath the shell but with an such a chronic infection and all the fluorid discharges were there i was not very keen on retaining it so was i right sir too risky to retain it too risky to retain it yes. so i was right in removing it yeah. because this was the part which has taken a lot of my time surgery almost lasted 7 to 8 hours and almost 2 hour 2 hours i must have spent in this one stage one step of removing the acetabular shell because it was uncemented uh, well integrated shell so that is how everything was cleaned well debrided well and then i i uh, went on to cleaning with the distal femur the remnant femur as i said this uh, the medial medial uh, cortex of proximal femur what we were seeing in the first x rays can see like there there was a involucromin and the sequestrated bone inside which was not very healthy and was not having good uh, soft tissue attachments also so in my subsequent stages with water struggle i faced like that whole tissue uh, uh, connections even i lost it and then uh, there was no choice in uh, taking it out um, first i tried to wire it up i tried to retain it i drilled the distal canal even the um, below the fracture in distal canal distal part of the femur there was some osteo uh, osteoporotic uh, sorry osteomyelitic foci were there there were cloacae seen on the x ray so i did uh, spend little time on cleaning that distal canal even so a gradual drilling opening up of the canal then good pulse lavage in the acetabulum in the soft tissue and in the canal and then i i uh, uh, first i i retained that uh, medial fragment and i wired it up with the distal fragment uh, putting a multiple circlage over there and then what i thought of like putting a, a antibiotic spacer use utilizing a, a indian made custom this long prosthesis cemented prosthesis what we get so thinnest i could uh, mobilize was 9 mm uh, to my uh, misfortune like the canal was very narrow but i could remit till 10 11 i went on little gradually with those golden rimmers what zimmer gives but in spite of that there was some struggle afterwards and in this particular part while i was doing that and i was trying to take a trials and all i did lost all the soft tissue connection of that medial fragment so i was not very happy in retaining that fragment again so that is how the trial was taken now what i had aimed for is like uh, uh, putting a cement antibiotic uh, cement spacer over there and uh, a normally what we uh, earlier we used to get those prostalac cement spacers antibiotic spacer molds we used to get where we like can uh, uh, create uh, this anti uh, this bipolar heads sort of thing uh, to put on this uh, um, stems but now uh, those spacers are not available i did tried a lot but i think like some indian companies give it i was not able to i spent almost a week in searching for it but i couldn't get it so what customization i did is like i took a bipolar ka uh, original prosthesis sterile prosthesis and on table uh, we are averted in putting the liners inside polyethylene is the one which will attract the biofilms and will help in uh, preserving the infection inside so what i did is i just tried removing that liner of the original prosthesis original sterile implant i took it out and then that shell i filled with the cement this is how the cement uh, was mixed with the vancomycin was the sensitive antibiotic what i had like after an antibiotic holiday whatever culture i could uh, mobilize it came staph aureus positive and was vancomycin sensitive utilizing that i did this cemented uh, uh, stem coating and that you can see like the silicon tube was utilized slit in between and the stem was put in between around and the coat was little rolled up the way we uh, uh, this uh, on table we uh, 
create this antibiotic rods or antibiotic lanes for the infected non immune same thing was util same principle was utilized here and utilizing that uh, acid uh, bipolar ka shell a cement was put in and on the 28th ka head that head and uh, shell was uh, made into a single unit like uh, unipolar processes so that is how it was at the end but this this distal portion again was like almost 9 mm ka stem it had become almost more than 11 mm or so do i tried uh, reducing its size and it was difficult in inserting uh, in the distal canal so at the end i had to just take out that distal uh, stem ka uh, cement and only the proximal coating i retained it that is how and this was the post op x ray so this is this is the today scene yesterday only i did a wound check he is quite settled now what next hello yeah am i audible yes yes so this this is this, this is where i am landed up now Now, so now. when should i think of a revision how should i proceed further how should i monitor him and what should be my next move as i mentioned you will need a tumor prosthesis yes sir uh something like there is a prosthesis of uh, zimmer biomet uh, arcos prosthesis which has a holes for proximal trochanteric attachment it is a distal fitting stem same like a wagner but wagner doesn't give at the proximal holes for the trochanteric reattachment arcos gives that i think it has the holes as well as some trochanteric plate they give to fix the trochanteric fragment with the stem so that is a one option i will have which will come little cheaper i think but uh, the proximal femoral replacement as sir suggested the tumor processes would be a little costly affair but that would be a, a the most likely requirement to leave the proximal part Unsupported. I don't yeah. think it's so easy. Sir, if you leave the proximal part unsupported by any other implant, yeah, just hanging there, it will not work. It will not work. Okay. Okay. It will not work for a long time. It will work, but not for a long time. Okay. So I have to think of something a very robust, uh, thick implant there. Like a tumor process. Shushrut makes. Shushrut makes custom made tumor implant. If okay. I, so somebody I don't remember who. Okay. So it will be cheaper than those really the imported uh, tumor process. Okay. I'll check with them, sir. So that was it. Was here. Whatever the GT which is there, the GT you put it back into the tumor prosthesis, but it yes. will not obviously it will not heal up there. So mm -hmm. well, the abductor power is going to be retained is also the million dollar question. Uh, in this particular surgery, what I noticed was like because of this chronic infection, the all the uh, surrounding tissue was quite fibrotic and it was quite thick. this time also they do i have not reattached it to the uh, because the cement is there i just placed that uh, shell over there the, it has a abductor attachment but the rest of the like from anteriorly i opened it anterolateral approach i utilized so i could just like uh, do a good uh, suturing of those abductors so you will have just to, to avoid minimize the risk of dislocation at this stage also of this prosthesis also i just do uh, did a good abductor uh, suturing utilizing a Ethylon one suture, not the vicryl, but I utilize ethylon one, and uh, I I did sutured abductors well. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you. Something. Are you there, Gadi Gune? You are muted, Gadi Gune. You are muted. Um. 
Asim, do you have a case? So, am I audible and visible? Yes. So, I will present some of the cases of bifocal femoral fracture. Sir, I will take 20 minutes. Is it okay? There is no red light here. So, you don't have to worry. Okay, sir. And if you don't have to worry, you will have to worry. So, this is ipsilateral hip and shaft fractures. And uh, six to nine percent of all femoral fractures, bimodal young patients, high energy trauma, and in elderly osteoporotic femur with multifocal fractures with excessive combination low energy injuries. So majority of the time, in thirty percent, they are missed fractures, which are not detectable on admission, but they discover during nailing or in a postoperative period when you do a soft. Nailing fracture shaft femur. So you can see here, this is the fracture shaft of the femur missed in uh, some of the cases. But how to diagnose and suspect the uh, fracture neck of the femur whenever you get a fracture shaft of the femur? It is the suspicion, and we must obtain the x ray of the hip joint in neutral as well as in internal rotation to see the fracture. And most of the time, when the leaf is in external rotation, there is overlapping and therefore you don't see the X-ray. Therefore, proximal fragment should be internally rotated and then you see the fracture line and you still suspect that in X-ray there is no fracture and pain is there, then patient should be advised CT scan to detect the fracture. So, missed hip fractures, patient complains of pain after I am nailing up the femur post-operative hip x-ray in 15 degrees of internal rotation may discover the fracture. These are the types. Type 1, non-displaced femoral neck, hip fracture when found prior to the nailing. Displaced neck fracture when found prior to the nailing. And missed fracture femoral neck after the nailing it is revealed. And mostly it is a vertical fracture, maybe hydrogenic during the nailing, as you can see here. Previously, it was not seen, but after nailing, it was revealed there may be a concealed fracture which has been displaced because of the hammering of the nail. So, fundamental fact, vertical fracture neck femur seen in 26 to 59 percent of the cases. Pavel's angle more than 70, but less incidence of EVN in this type of a fracture. Because of the most of the burnt of the trauma is on the fracture shaft of the femur and very little on the hip joint. Therefore, anatomical configuration as well as the vascular sir, is not geopardized. Where a small union of the femoral neck is not uncommon, osteotomy is lead to poor result. Hence, optimum fixation of the femur nail should be the goal. Two techniques of fixation. When the neck fracture is non-displaced or reducible, stabilize the neck first. Avoid further displacement of neck of the fracture at AVN. When the neck is displaced as well as the shaft, the shaft fracture stabilize first and then reduction of the neck on a stable femur. So that is the dictum. When it is undisplaced, reduce and fix the fracture neck first. And when there is a displacement of both the fracture shaft as well as the neck, then probably will not be able to reduce neck fracture, though it is a priority. Reduce the fracture neck femur, stabilize it by any implant, and then do a manure and uh, stabilize the neck. Often requires open reduction of the one of the fracture because much more manipulation will lead to the vascular necrosis as well as in manipulation of the shaft, it will increase the soft tissue trauma. So treatment option, choice is implant is a key decision. And two separate implant is now an internationally accepted method of fixation in ipsilateral fracture, hip, and the shaft of the femur. But one implant to fix the both fracture, there is a 
literature evidence that it also if it is done properly and in indicated cases it gives equally good results so this is an example screw dhs retrograde nail to implant current literature accepted method whether you use a screw or a nail plate with a retrograde nail or plate to implant construct reduces the strain of a single implant and offers optimum biomechanical stabilization of the ipsilateral femoral shaft fractures this is an example fracture shaft of the femur in a 43 year male fracture shaft of the femur treated by a close nailing post x ray did not reveal any fracture in the present x ray but patient continued to have a pain after movement of the hip joint and you can see post operative pain x ray revealed fracture neck femur 15 days post op and there is a vertical fracture neck of the femur and it was stabilized by mesenel technique four weeks post op and one year follow up fracture united with a good functional outcome so when you can reduce the fracture of the neck of the femur and it is not a very displaced and if you found on the table it is better to fix by a mesenel technique at the time of the surgery another example a displaced femoral neck fracture when found prior to the nailing then the treatment plan remains something different and this type of a fixation does not give a very good result like a mesenel technique because there is a good stabilization of the femoral shaft but a very inferior quality stabilization neck by a two screw technique and ultimately what has happened three months follow up of radigora it was looking good and ultimately there is a virus collapse and virus malignant though fracture has united but it is united into the virus and probably it may require an abduction astrome in future so mesenel technique it is easier to say than done but it's very difficult because the nail is in integrate in situ and canal is obliterated do you have to put the nails anterior and posterior to the nail with very tricky and it is a very difficult job increases the risk of avascular necrosis of the femoral head if you do a repeated drilling and putting the wires in the femoral head 51 year male motor vehicular accident oblique femoral neck fracture with the shaft plan first fixation of the neck by cc screw or dhs with anti rotation screw followed by a retrograde nail fixation of the shaft that was the planning was done and ultimately the technique prioritizes anatomical reduction and fixation of the femoral neck temporary stabilization followed by fixation of the shaft and then supplemented with the dhs and additional screw technique another example a 51 year male motor vehicular accident dhs with a supracondylar nail fixation anatomical restoration fracture propagation during nailing hypertrophic nonian and ultimately it has converted into augmentation plate over the nail without changing the implant and fracture went to union another example this is example a garden type 2 neck fracture femur and there is a comminuted fracture of the shaft treated by a 362 and plate system two implant screw and plate fixation but it is a plate fixation is a very cumbersome technique it requires a long incision open technique probably infections chances are much more therefore this method is not in practice in recent years though giving a good exposure and ease of fixation by plate this method is now rarely used now i will tell you a very simple example of a case of a neglected fracture inability to weight bear on a affected leg even after two months of supracondylar nailing x ray revealed a fracture neck femur 26 year male complete osteoponia resection of the femoral neck and it is very difficult to save the femoral head and even the shaft fracture is also not united properly fracture neck femur arc and then how to proceed and you can see i did exchange nailing for femoral shaft 
क्लोज रिडक्शन एबडक्शन ऑस्टियोटोमी आईलेक्रेस ग्राफ फिबुलर ग्राफ एज ए खेलकेर एंड देन डिरोटेशन स्क्रू दिस वॉज दि सर्जरी वॉज डन थ्री मंथ फॉलो अप एंड यू कैन सी फॉलो अप आफ्टर एबडक्शन ऑस्टियोटोमी फिबुलर ग्राफ थ्री मंथ फॉलो अप द फ्रैक्चर इज कंसॉलिडेटिंग and you can see radiological and functional after and after 2 years of follow up after removal of the nail 3 years follow up after abduction osteotomy neck length is restored complete incorporation of the fibula good calcar formation and good quality of the femoral neck resume duties in a coal mines and you can see after removal of this implant Six month after the removal of implant, sustained a supra condylar fracture through the screw holes of the supra condylar nail through locking screw crack after a trivial trauma. And how to proceed then? And this was a very difficult revise with the locking plate. And even after this locking plate, though it was looking very good. after one year follow up fracture failed to unite healing was doubtful and you can see 18 month follow up non union revealed at the supracondylar region and the patient experienced pain and unable to walk and ultimately how to do revise the infection but i did not revise the plate i did a bone grafting and ultimately the fracture has united and you can see this is the functional outcome of this patient after 13 years of follow up as a original fracture neck tumor and a 3 years follow up after the non union of the femoral uh, supracondylar region another this is a bifocal femoral fracture treated by osteopath two month old no comorbidity young man and you can see there is a severe shortening and this is how it is what to do in such a situation to revise what i did i did osteoclesis and distraction of the femoral shaft because i was thinking that there is a good valgus maintenance in the femoral leg in the intertrochanteric tract and probably that fracture is uniting and ultimately osteoclesis distraction and then conversion to the pfn no what The grafting was done as there was exuberant callus around the fracture. Six month follow up, twelve months follow up, and you can see three years follow up. Everything healed around the nail without bone grafting. He regained length. There is some problem in the hip joint during external rotation. That is the only difficulty. Otherwise, he is a farmer able to sit and squat and do his daily duties. Another example. you can see it was done by one of my colleague in 2007 this was the ipsilateral fracture femoral shaft as well as the intertrochanteric cervical basal fracture he could not put a two screws he put a one screw without reduction and there was a null spin was put inside there was a hopas fracture also and he has done something different case so 2006 then he came to me with the pain inability to walk and constant pain on slightest movement and there was a pin track infection in the femoral proximal femoral first x ray is not available and then what to do there are so many things it has been done by this way because it was initial implant was recently that time introduced and nobody knows how to do a long pfn in a as such a bifocal femoral fracture so what i did removal of implant debridement of the wound and skeletal traction for 3 weeks so no signs of infection and therefore surgery was planned and ultimately i did abduction osteotomy fixation with double angled dhs you can see here that time i did and fixation with a supracondylar nail for a for a, a fracture femur and ultimately you can see here follow up after 6 month after clinical photograph of the segment that the fracture osteotomy uniting you can see follow up x ray after 10 years and you can see here how remodeling of the greater trochanter has happened whole proximal femoris and 90% of the movements at the knee joint 
follow up after 15 years there are arthritic changes and you can see this is the clinical photograph and he is able to do each and everything people to see it squared and he is happy and i am also happy after a 15 years of follow up another example a mixed fracture neck femur 46 year male presented with fracture short femur no comorbidity what are the thing man must look for before the patient is subjected a small nursing home no hip joint x ray no ap and lateral and the things were done and nailing was done in this case and you can see there was a fracture neck of the femur which was missed and there was a loosening of the screws and ultimately this patient complained of pain and inability to weight bear at three months ultimately shortening limb in external rotation nail in shooting welding hole fracture with signs of union fracture intracapsular neck is revealed in the ap x ray you can see and what to do now there is a loosening of screw so ultimately removal of the nail fixation of fracture with two implant revision with single implant so what i did i revised with a long pfn in this case and follow up after 3 months the patient one year follow up both fracture united though there is a some varus in the neck but ultimately patient was happy and after 18 months follow up patient started pain in the groin in the hip joint and there was a subchondral radial lucency which shows that the patient is going for a vascular necrosis and then patient started pain and you can see here so i removed the both the screws and packed with a iliac crest grafts and uh, then again i observed for some time remove of nail because of loosening of the distal interlocking bolts after two years of follow up and this was the clinical picture after two years there was a sale of the femoral head and there is a tell tale evidence of this fibula which i put inside after removal of the screw and you can see after two years and patient was walking painless limp without an external aid and you can see six years follow up that the fibula reappeared and there was a some evidence of bone formation here and it is taking shape of the femoral head functional outcome after 6 years 13 years follow up and you can see here that the fibula acted as a femoral head there is remodeling and then ultimately i have taken the the ct scan and you can see that it well incited inside there is hypertrophy of the graft patient is painless functional outcome and then you can see a video of this patient it is after 13 years of follow up this this patient is walking 3 km 4 km and he is a farmer going daily to uh, to his field another example epilateral fracture neck femur with a very comminuted fracture of the distal femur you can see calcify hopage everything is there with the segmental fracture of the shaft i did a plating here is also a plating was done and then there is a super fusion of the implants dhs with the additional screw and a locking plate for a bridge step principal to the tibia and you can see one year follow up good union functional outcome all fractures they healed and everything healed around the plate i did a mipro technique without geoparding anything intraarticular fracture and there was a patellar fracture also and follow up after 6 month follow up one year and rationally to use of i am nailing simultaneous reconstruction of both fracture with the integrated single device while avoiding trauma to the knee is attractive for its elegance and efficiency the use of cubulatory device to address both fractures simultaneously lead to significantly higher rate of mal reduction of one of the fractures that i am aware of this thing and still 
there are so many reports about the ipsilateral intertrochanteric and fracture neck tumor they are treated by long femoral nail better choice of treatment in a complex fracture achievement of a biological fixation both fracture with a single implant and i also published a paper in 2013 in 42 cases is one of the most beneficial implant in the category of reconstruction nail but we have to do it very properly and technically it is a demanding procedure this is an example single construct with cubital nail both fractures can be fixed by minimal invasive surgery and how to do it position on the patient and you can see with the assisted stinman pin of a fractured neck femur or a clamp reduction of the trochanter may require open reduction and this is how who can clamp assisted reduction for the intertrochanteric arteriotro fracture neck femur key to the success primary temporary stabilization of the neck fragment and you can see this is how it is we have to put a guide wire then reduce the shaft fracture and ultimately proximal stabilization distal stabilization and you can use additional screws these are all examples but we have to check the rotational instability that is most important because we are putting both the fractures together and one must check a rotational mal alignment and that is the call mark up a single implant and probably this is the example fracture neck femur with the shaft segment tibia fracture you can see a vertical fracture neck femur with the shaft femur and the fracture has healed everything another fracture you can see a fracture neck femur with the shaft fracture so i can quote innumerable example i have and i can say that vertical fracture neck femur with shaft fracture can be treated and you can see here both fracture has united very nicely i have a very long series of this thing but for newer people i advocate still i say that the two implants are easier to do a surgery than a single implant but you are expert and technically you are a superior man you can have a, a single implant for both the fractures and you can see this is the fracture both the both fractures can be treated subtrochanteric fracture sharp fracture everything but this is one of the most interesting example recently i have done it fracture neck femur with the pelvis fracture with the supracondyle region so i tried this method reduced it properly pelvic fixation and i think i have done a, a very good job by doing this thing and ultimately what has happened this fracture collapsed this fracture collapsed weight into the varus and you can see i had that day a very short nail therefore i augmented with the torus nails that is advocated to prevent a varus and valgus but that also did not work well so i did internal bone grafting with the valgus osteotomy to the neck femur and a locking plate in a bridge mode and a one torus nail on the medial side and you can see the after two months of follow up after six month of follow up one year follow up and now recent follow up of 10 days ago you can see the fracture that is all uniting this is also uniting and a 15 months follow up now still i am doubtful about the fracture at this fracture neck fever but he is a painless he is able to sit and squat that is the only hopeful sign still the fracture fever has united so complication by various methods there are complication and it is the most complicated surgery sharp fracture 30% non union 3 to 14% avian 4% because it's a low energy trauma to the neck and high energy trauma to the shaft secondary fracture dislocation and mal rotation is the most common literature so take home message difficulties in reducing the fracture and its maintenance with careful planning reconstruction and nailing should not be preferred in a displaced femoral neck fracture because while doing a surgery it is going to get more displacement and more chances of avascular necrosis and in that case one must prefer to use a two implants 
the femoral neck fracture should be preferably be stabilized first because it has a priority of to prevent a avascular necrosis and non-ingenue. A short delay of five to six days in stabilizing ipsilateral femoral neck and shaft factor does not seem to affect the ultimate functional outcome. Therefore, don't be in a hurry for stabilization because majority of the time they are of a polytrauma patient. Two implants prefer, but no evidence. And I am an ardent supporter of a single implant in fracture shaft and neck femur, though I believe and literature also favors two implants preferred over the one implant. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Gadi Gune, sir. One query, sir. Yes. Sir, good evening, Lito, sir. Sir, uh, ipsilateral neck or, or shaft femur fracture may upper internal rotation view to any buying, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, internal rotation view to me, I gonna sir, ipsilateral neck or shaft femur again. Internal rotation, nay, karte hai, na? Haan, sir. Haan, to proximal femur johana, usko rotate karna parta. X-ray, make a say. You give some sedation or an or usko badme actually fracture to rotate on the limb for rotate proximal femur go thyco rotate above the fracture of the shaft of the femur, then and then you will get an internal rotation. Okay, sir. Yes, a reduction maneuver may get the internal rotation. So that is patient is an anesthesia. You pass a stiffen pin over the proximal femur and do your yes, sir. Then is a woo. अरेफिसर हो जाएगा एक्सरे के लिए पूछा था जब एक्सरे के लिए ठीक है ना सिडेशन दो और उनको रोटेट करो थोड़ा सा अपना थाय को ठीक है सर ठीक है सर थैंक यू सर डॉक्टर संगीत यू आर देयर डू यू वांट टू प्रेजेंट अ केस नो सर नो ओके देन आई थिंक आई विल प्रेजेंट अ केस जस्ट नाउ बिफोर गोइंग फर्दर कैन यू सी माय स्लाइड्स Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, uh, ha, please. Hai na? Yes. This is a very peculiar case. I do not know what was wrong with her. 11 year old girl, two days sudden pain and inability to bend the knee with the pain and tenderness in the distal thigh. Seven days gradually increasing pain and inability to bend the knee with pain and tenderness in the distal part of the thigh. This was the X-ray and this was the MRI. Since X-ray didn't reveal anything, there was no history of injury. So I got an MRI done of the thigh. Why was it painful? An MRI shows this inflammation of the quadriceps muscle. All this is it was it was really reported as inflammation of the quadriceps muscle. Nothing else which was there. These are the few changes which are there in the muscle. This is typically what is seen is the inflammation of the quadriceps muscle. I just didn't know. I've never seen this entity. All these are the, here is the tender spot and they showed it is inflamed here. You can see that very well. So here was the marker which was put. So that marker which was put and it shows this inflammatory area. Now what to do? As possibility was acute inflammatory reaction in a quadricent muscle. Diffuse cortisone plus xylocaine was injected all over the distal part of the quadriceps. Here I, I just injected this xylocaine and uh, cortisone at this area. And this immediately after the injection, here was the position. Because as I said, before the injection, it was only like this. She couldn't even bend further. It was only this much flexion which was there. If she couldn't bend further. And once injection was given immediately, I could have this movement. Four weeks later, all okay. Still I don't know what is the diagnosis. Why did inflammation occur? But as I said here, the once you suspect there is something which is not right, and the, I feel the key was these MRI findings with the marker. I had asked the MRI chap that this, this is the tender area. So you mark it and give me the pictures. 
and all these pictures which came were very revealing the local inflammation there was no injury no infection nothing and as you said i had not put on antibiotic all what was the local depometrol and the whole thing held up so it was just an observation and i felt this was a very odd observation and that's the reason i'm presenting this case now the so did you aspirate sir no no in as you can see in the in the mri all it was an inflammation there was no there was no fluid collection it was only the general inflammation of the quadriceps traumatic i presume but still the patient very firmly denies any trauma or anything anything at all any other question see how i am presenting this case only because i think i have a presentation of head is stronger than the machine if you suspect something this case i think obviously seven days he came from birar which is far off from where i practice it is about 3 3 and a half hours i think by a by a by a unit transport and obviously it was treated nearby with an rj6 now when she comes all over here i think it was uh, you got to find out something and why should any a young girl get like this get a pain sudden pain and inability to bend the knee obviously there is something in the quadriceps you suspect you ask for the mri mri is suggestive of something non infective and i think it was purely the thought process which told me that you give it the implementation see that is how the whole thing happened now here is this case it goes back to 1977 this is one of those very very early thr which i had done this is 1977 acetabulum fracture in those days we were treating only conservatively and this is the end result of a conservative treatment then the pain came in so in 78 i did this thr this was 40 years back or still more than 40 probably when i presented this all what we could do is superiorly the acetabulum was intact but inferiorly there was no no acetabulum bone so that was filled up with the bone cement in those days this is what all what we we had so this was the bone cement which was filled up and here is the molar prosthesis which came earlier so uh, so only two prosthesis were there chanle and molar and chanle didn't supply to anybody else So unless those who had done the training, which I had not done the training, so the molar was available, and I did the molar prosthesis, and this is 1978, and this is 1998, 20 years, 20 years it went on, and then it became loose. You can see this, it became loose. So this was the only revision thing, something which was available, shell. So I put the shell. 20 years back, and I did the revision knee, and I didn't have a bigger prosthesis. It wasn't available. We had only this one type of a prosthesis. This was a um, extended neck, and there was there was no extension because once I removed the once I removed the implant, I I nowadays we know that we have to go two inches below, but we I couldn't go two inches below. It, it is how it was. Once I removed the implant, I done the trochanteric osteotomy, and this is where I went. And this cement was going out of this, and as expected, it broke down. So this was the revision which was done in few months only. You can see again there was no extension which was available. So at that time, there was no extended implant which were available. So here it is. at that time dr mukhi was helping me in lilavati hospital and mukhi so wisely he says sir i have cut femurs this is a femoral nail which has been cut so he he brought it from the nursing home this femoral nail cut and which we could the available implant it was shoved into this femur this is a femoral nail it was shoved so this extended implant which was that and then it was finished we did this as you can see circlage this uh, fever was done 
This was a post operatively, you can see it very well. And then the whole thing held up beautifully. So here is that uh, we couldn't have the long, long stem which was made available by this female thing. And this is how everything held up. Quite a few years went by. And this is nine years after this female nail broke down. You can see here, the female nail broke down. This is the stage the patient came to me, but by this time he was really old. He, he had become haggard and we said, okay, you need the operation, but who is going to now do the operation? How are you going to finish this? By this time, everything was available, but he could carry it on except he had a small niggle here. Otherwise, functionally, he was very good. This bone had held up. So we conserved. This is how we conserved and this thing ultimately went on. And after two years, they their uh, family phoned me up that he expired without any revision surgery done. And uh, I feel that, that these are those earlier experiences of this sort of a hit. Any questions or any comments? Are you people there? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello, hello, sir. Yes, sir. Who is Suntani? I am. Okay, whether I am. Sir, I just wanted to comment on that. What is the magic? What is the magic of keeping all the record of forty years of this patient? <laughs> this is the one of those most interesting cases. Most interesting case of this, huh? from the slides it became digital. Oh, I yeah. used to present this in the slide form. Yes. Then it became digital, so I kept those digital things. And this occasionally I have been able to present this. Yes, sir. Really nice to see this. Yes, sir. Rajendra. Yes, sir. Sir, we are giving a lecture for 50 years. If we don't do a lecture, how do we give a lecture? लेकिन कभी न कभी काम आते बराबर <laughs> we had to keep a physical <laughs> slide. <laughs> and those physical slide was if you are giving a talk, we used to take out 2000 slides <laughs> and then we have to hunt it out those um, appropriate slides. <laughs> and then we started how to keep that record and it became a big mess. So I remember all my assistants and everybody, hmm. they would be really fuming. Those 2000 slides used to say, Kidar, Kidar, Ek hai, Kidar, Ek hai, nikalo, nikalo, nikalo. <laughs> then we'll find it out in three hours' time. And that, that is how we used to prepare. Then I think I kept those few bits, few presentations in the slide form. Then one, two, three, four, five, we used to put the slide number. And all that was a mess. And then ultimately, computer came. So it became a little more easier. Now, obviously, it's far more easier than those days where we had probably a big problem keeping those yeah. slides and presenting those slides. And yeah, I sir. do not know if any of you have presented. If two, two computers are there, where we used to put slide number one and slide number one on the other side. And mm -hmm. both the computers have to be started together. And when we change over also, both of them have to be clicked. So many times it would happen here. On one side, there will be slide number three. And the other slide, there will be slide number five. And the speaker himself will be confused. <laughs> this used to happen like so often. And I remember... I remember at times we used to give presentations from three, three, three slide projectors. And you can imagine while putting it, if everything went down and if we had not numbered them, oh, it was, a, it was a one hour job to put them back. So we started numbering one, two, three, four. Now in one presentation, it is one, two, three, four. Same slide in the second presentation is the 11th. So again, there will be a confusion. All this, <laughs> all this cycle we went through. And now it is a much more easier situation. Yes. Sangeet, yes, Sangeet you want to talk something? No, nothing, sir. Nothing. 
लेकिन सर सर आपके सर आपके वो पीड़ित स्टूडेंट अभी भी याद करते होंगे आपको स्लाइड ढूंढने वाले <laughs> वो तो बिचारे तो अभी क्या गए सब किधर ना किधर गए अभी इज द पेशेंट आर यू सीइंग माय स्लाइड no sir you are not oh. share this no no sir. no sorry i'll 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 share it again don't you with your options are you seeing my slide now no sir not yet not yet <laughs> sorry Now it's there. I, I lost my my presentation. Just a minute. Now you can see five times operated non-union. Yes, 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 sir. Yeah. Now here is the patient. The Arab patient came to me. Five surgeries, six years infection, and quiet for last six months. This is the stage. I saw the patient. You can see all these old telltale signs of some operations. Five surgeries he had underwent, and now this is the stage I came. So how will you treat this? anybody any participants firstly get a esr crp done to rule out any infection i am not hiding anything six infection quiet for six months there is no infection now reconstruction so have no no ambiguity about how will you reconstruct uh The long loss by nipo maybe sir removal of the sclerosis bone and acute docking shortening of humerus and compression plating with bone graft do you see any dead bone here any uh, questionable bone means sir it's sclerosis in, bone in the, in the x ray there is nothing seen no sir no anyway, bone is seen anyway this is how i went through Open up the medullary cavity. Open up the fracture. Open up the medullary cavity. Rim gradually with the increasing power rimmer to adequate size to put the fit the fibula. This is you know, this is you start with the drill and gradually go on bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And having adequately dilated the medullary cavity, size of the fibula graft will be one smaller than the last rimmer used. So now you take out the fibula. <coughs> and twin the fibula to adequate size with oscillating saw or a bone bar whatever you like to do nowadays nowadays generally in humerus it is necessary to split the fibula in the center with the oscillating saw or a reciprocating saw or a larger bone cutter instrument and if in case while splitting you may tear you, you may really break it off and there is a problem so off late i have started taking in c2 only half the fibula if i am operating upon the humerus so make this multiple drill holes and connect them and only take this half the fibula now once you have taken half the fibula now you know the how to measure it and all so the, either you can use this or you can use an acl jig and now you use the canal femur gauge or acl graft measure sleeve to judge the trimming down of the fibula So you here is the fibula. You see the fibula how how good it is and uh, okay, okay, what is the size of it. So measure the fibula. Now having tried the fibula which is going, you got to try it that it goes both the ends properly. Once it goes both the ends, now you mark in the center, and then angulate it and put the thing there 
and and put it in the center there. And it is it is helped by either a small thin osteotome or any of these sharp things to push the fibula back. And wherever you mark in the center, that will come, and that is the place where you stop. Now you put the plate in a compressive mode with the bone grafting. Now here is the fibula, put all the way down, and then you can put it in the distal part. So you can see I'm putting it in first, so it goes all the way up there. And now it goes into the lower fragment here, as you can see. Both the fragments have been prepared. And here is the here is the shingling which you which we had already spoken, and then I have done the plating there. So here it is. This is the fibula. This is the this is the plate which has gone in fibula, and then as a autograph which has been put in. This is two months, and here it is fifteen months. So this is the patient which is so many times it has been operated upon when he comes to you. Not a single bone has to be removed because, as I said, I judge that there is nothing which is really necrotic or infected, and this is how it ultimately held up. But you can see the range of movement. Fortunately, it was anteriorly the, all the surgeries were done, so I also went anteriorly. I didn't want to really fiddle around with the radial now. So here is the adduction, abduction. This is how the patient has got, and so it is. I feel whatever is the non-union is always possible to get a union by and large. Very rarely that you will not get a union in any of these patients. Any questions? Sir, any role of dual plating? In, uh, this in is, a, if you see the intramedullary fibula works like a dual plate. Dual plate. Dual plate. Yes, sir. Because they, it is also giving you the stability. Okay, sir. Sangeet, this is your case. It is, I have written your name. What is the alternative if the fibula is not there? He has asked a very good question. Second plate. The second plate to me is uh, in a humerus, there is hardly much space. So even a 3.5 second plate you put in, the, the bone really gets covered up from all sides. So nail and a plate probably still will be a better option, I think. Because two plates in a humerus, is a is it's little uh, view. Uh, I reminded of Dr. Chauvel. Where is bone here? It's all metal, metal, metal. <clears throat> Sir, the role of fibula is uh, yeah, here. Sunny, yes, sunny. Hello? Sir? Yes, yes. Sunny, sir. Uh, role of fibula hello, hello. here is. is uh, Additional stability plus osteoconduction or only a stability? That, that's right, that's right. Additional stability plus a bone graft. Yeah. Uh, for humerus, uh, for not, a, not regarding a non union, sir, I'm just yes. asking about a normal. Primary surgeries are being done for fracture shaft humerus. Should we uh, do a broad uh, three point uh, broad four point five or uh, a narrow four point five? In an Indian patient, I have always used a small small four point five. I have hardly ever used a broad four point five. I don't know, Sangeet, do you use a four? You use a broad one ever? No, no, never, sir. Uh, because in an Indian patient, it is damn difficult to use it. You, Vashudev, you use a broad. No, no, no. Broad may use it. It will be out of the humor lady's shop. Actually, sir, I have also used uh, narrow. But when I went back to the books, they all mentioned broad, sir. That's why I asked. Yeah, they are all the books which are foreign patients. Probably the humorous is big enough. They are sir, huge patients. Sir, six, done six foot plus. Yes, sir. Are done uh, in few cases in that Sangeet sir said six foot and uh, in uh, heavyweight patients, sir. Done uh, few broad DCP, sir. They, their humerus is as good as our as a femur, femur, sir. <laughs> <laughs> sir, 
सर वो बॉडी बिल्डर हरियाणा पंजाब में मिल जाते हैं सर कई तो ठीक है and and tricks and tricks to avoid radial nerve, sir. It's always there at the back of my mind. We have discussed this, no? In humorous shaft. Arre, to explore kar lene ka, usme kya blindly mat karo. You have to go in the virgin area proximally and explore it. From there you start. So there is a good chance that you will by the time you come to the fibrous area, you will know at least one end of the uh, the radial now. Which you will be able to dissect it out without damaging the radium. Now, the the issue Any, here, the issue uh, here is in a non-union. Uh, we cannot separate like a virgin humerus. Uh, yeah. There is there is usually a vessel along. If you follow that vessel, you get a good neurovascular bundle of the nerve and the vessel in a virgin case. But in a fibrous or the one we have non union or operated multiple times only thing is as sir said start from the virgin area and uh, you cannot dissect the fibrous tissue that is the maximum time it takes so best is once you identify where exactly in in that area or in the fibrous tissue the nerve is then lift up subperiosteally the entire mass uh, if the size of the nerve is say this much probably in a non union you need uh, to uh, you know elevate all that neurovascular bundle which is almost 1 and 1/2 inch but you can do it safely if you are subperiosteally reflecting it so don't try to separate out the nerve as such whole thing once you started from the from the proximal part go down and whole bunch of it you just you, you can put in a loop so that you know that you are guarding the nerve inside those that whole bunch of it Sir, I have a question. Uh, it's Dr. Jayan from Jamshedpur. Hello, hello. Uh, sir, in a shaft humerus fresh case with a combination uh, the fracture site uh, somewhere around the mid shaft, uh, could you share your experience regarding the MIPO technique? We have spoken about it. No, MIPO. We have spoken anterior MIPO. I think it is there in some of those uh, talks. I okay. think. Uh, somebody gave a small uh, small presentation also all it is a, it is a very straight forward surgery proximally and distally you open it up you try to try to look after the musculocutaneous nerve proximally and the radial nerve distally and you will be able to put two screws above two screws below and majority of the times this this fracture heals up two two screws are going to be more than enough in this uh, particularly the anterior mid core And the compression is not required at the fracture side. No, 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 no. Nepo, you can't do the compression. All what you do is do cross, cross reduction, axis correction. Okay, sir. thank you. So, <clears throat> in this case, the fibula which was used uh, could uh, the uh, locking uh, compression plate could have been uh, used in spite of the fibula. as i mentioned earlier we have discussed when you want to do the compression the yeah. screws will have to be outside the fibula we discussed that correct so upon once having compressed the fracture then you yeah. can use any plate i don't think there is any problem at all locking or no, not locking no 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 sir in spite of using the fibula only the locking compression plate in a compression mode yeah compression mode as i mentioned the yes. the whole thing has to be outside the fibula on one side okay. next sir if you use a intramedullary uh, fibula how can we do a compression that is what he is asking there is That's no what we have discussed sanjit earlier also i have shown the slide the on one side the screw should be away from the fibula end other side it can be in the fibula preferably outside the fibula so that you are not relying on the fibula tuck there and then only you can compress 
If your both the screws are on the fibula, you cannot compress. We have discussed that, and I think I had showed also the uh, picture also at one stage. Yes, sir. Okay, last last thing I will show. Sir, one, today, I sir, one query, over. sir, one query May regarding uh, regarding infection, sir. Uh, dormant dormant infection, sir. One query, sir. Bolo, bolo. I think we are already coming to a ten o'clock. Okay, sir. Then uh, the question. We only have a discussion now. Okay. Sir, uh, any role of sir injection penidura sir penicillin in uh, dormant infection sir? What do you mean by that? Sir, uh, at my institute uh, and 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 some other institutes in Haryana, sir, injection penidura twenty four lakh international unit uh, is given every fifteen days in uh, chronic osteomyelitis or dormant chronic osteomyelitis, sir, without discharging sinus. That is all right. I think if you are that means you are trying to suppress the infection, which after having operated upon two three times doing the sequestrectomy, if there is still infection continues, that then, then yes, I think the only way you have got is the to suppress the infection with antibiotic. So that is perfectly justified, I think. But it cannot be for the for the acute injury infection. So, but some patient are undergoing their treatment for five five six six years. As I said, the surgeon has given up the idea that you will do the sequestrectomy or you do the debridement, and you can cure the infection. Having done it two, three, four times, now what is there with you? Still, it continues, and these people continue for years together, and that's the reason why you can continue, continue for a long time. There is no other option you have got, and if you can keep every say 15 days, you are giving the injection, and if you can keep the infection quiet, that is good enough. I don't see any anything harm in that, but okay, that is sir. after you have given up the cure, after doing a repeated surgery. Okay, sir. And 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 uh, any patient with active uh, discharge, we have to go for sequestrectomy. Yeah, yeah. First, I think two three times you will go for sequestrectomy, sauterization, all the necrotic bone you will try to remove. All those three things are done, and once having done three, four, five times. Then only all these things come into the picture. With the active discharge also, sir. Then uh, my query is that with uh, with the no active discharge, I am okay. That you are keeping the uh, infection dormant, dormant by uh, giving penidura penicillin fifteen days long acting penicillin. Yeah. But in active discharge, sir, uh, if you have done two one or uh, two or three times, you question me. Should we in active discharge also? I, I would personally not do that active discharge. Active discharge, I'll really clean it out, wash it out, and then put it on antibiotic. And then you can continue to do it if you like penidura for every 15 days. That's perfectly all right. If it is sensitive, sir, it's very, if it is very, not sensitive, then it is again arbitrary. Ar sir, and, and secondly, sir, the action is very, very painful for the patient, sir. It, it, it should be given the gluteal region. I have no idea. और पेशेंट को वो दैट इज ओनली फॉर दिस दैट इज रोमेटिक फीवर केसेस दैट द पेनिडुरा इंजेक्शन इज गिवन फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम सर इफ मदान सर इज देयर सर इट्स वेरी प्रेवेलेंट इन हरियाणा सर ही टॉकिंग अबाउट हिज हिज सिटी इन हिज स्टेट स्टेट सर हरियाणा ट्रीटेड बिकॉज़ प्रोबेब्ली प्रोबेब्ली द सीनियर टीचर वाज डूइंग इट एंड ऑल हिज स्टूडेंट्स हैव टेकन अप सो दे हैव स्प्रेड ऑल अराउंड एंड दे आर कंटिन्यूइंग टू डू दैट वो सर Actually, Rohtak was the only uh, postgraduate institute in Haryana, sir. Previously, now we have uh, almost six postgraduate institute. But the treatment protocol is almost similar in all institutes, sir. By the way, in the time, sir, वो एक क्रिस्टलाइन पेनिसिलिन पेनिडोरा और टेट्रासाइक्लिन के सिवा कुछ मिलता नहीं था. इसलिए वो ही चालू है अभी. बाबा आदम के जमाने की दवा. <laughs> वो कुछ काम वाम करती नहीं है साला पेट में और ग्लूटियल रीजन में दर्द देती रहती है बस हो गया सर आई हैव आई आई हैव डन एन एम्पुटेशन इन अ पेशेंट बिलोनी एम्पुटेशन ही वाज ऑन पेनिडोरा फॉर 15 इयर्स एंड डॉक्टर शर्मा डॉक्टर शर्मा डू यू वांट टू एंडोर्स फ्रॉम अस दैट योर बॉसेस आर रॉन्ग सर वी आर पोलाइटली अवॉइडिंग इट <laughs> नहीं नहीं आई एम नॉट इंटरेस्टिंग सर सर वो होता है ना सर आप लोग इतने सीनियर हो अब एक मिनट एक मिनट 
सीनियोरिटी डज नॉट गिव यू एक्सलेंस सर अब वही अब कुछ कह लो सर अब मैं सर अब वही है मैं थोड़ा उसकी तरफ ही हूँ सर प्रसिस्टेंस पे ही जाना चाहता हूँ कि मैं सोशलाइजेशन और हर में ड्रेन करना है इरिगेशन सेक्शन डालना है सब, के अंदर अभी शर्मा जी सब करो लेकिन पेनी डूरा बंद कर दो अभी <laughs> <laughs> सर मैं नहीं लगाता मैं नहीं लगाता सर <laughs> सर मेरी मेरी यूनिट में नहीं लगता सर <laughs> मेरी यूनिट में बिल्कुल भी नहीं लगता सर तो तू तेरा बॉस का नहीं सुनता है <laughs> सर जबरदस्त लड़ाई है जबरदस्त सर पेशेंट ट्रीटमेंट पर लेके जबरदस्त लड़ाई है और वो पेनीडेरा इन्फेक्शन का सीवियर रिएक्शन आता है इसमें एक्चुअली उसमें ये रहता ना वन ऑफ दी एक की डेथ भी हो चुकी है सर एक की डेथ भी हो सकती है और पेनीडेरा से कितने लोग मरे हुए हैं तुम्हारे हरियाणा में जरा निकाल वाला स्टेटिस्टिक when i am not on the north side in the north quite a lot of people still hair hitler continues while bombay and south it doesn't continue in so, bombay i dare not say anything and immediately the junior chef will get up and ask me sir so, same thing in, continues in nam in maharashtra gujarat and and the south of it i don't think the senior can just get away with my making any statement एड सर वही बस वही है मेरे और मेरे सीनियर्स में सर यही लड़ाई है कि वो कुछ भी कह देते हैं मैंने कहा कुछ भी तो तो नहीं रिक्वेस्ट है यस सर अगर अगर कुछ आर्गुमेंट होता है तो तन्ना सर का नाम मत लेना बोलना ना ना सर नाम का नहीं लेना सर मैंने बोला बंद करने के लिए वही सारा नहीं नहीं सर वो तो हमको गाली मिलेगा उसको क्या मालूम है सर नहीं नहीं सर वो तो यूनिट अलग है तो फिर मैं ट्रीटमेंट में कोई इंटरफेयरेंस नहीं लेता सर वो जो होता है फिर मैं अपने पे लड़ लेता हूं वो कोई बात नहीं है साले पेशेंट लोगों को बता देना जिनके के लिए तो उसमें वो घुसाते ना वो ग्लूटियल रीजन में वो चार दस पंद्रह लोगों का यूनियन बना दे आप बड़ा बड़ा बिल्कुल इंजेक्शन देखो तेरे को नाम लेना है तो गाड़ी होने का नाम सर एग्रेसिवली तेरे को बोलता है सर लेकिन पेशेंट भी ऐसे है सर वो आगे उनके चरण धोते हैं सर नहीं नहीं <laughs> and i have i have said it i think today also i was going to give that talk seniors and juniors they are equal because me as a senior most have started so many surgeries with sangeet only so he and me have started the same surgery like locking plate we have started all together only so i think that seniors do not have any advantage all the time and probably as a senior now i tell you is more difficult for me to update myself i have to read it three times when sangeet and and gadi kone will probably read it once and they will follow it i may have to read it twice thrice at times so it's not easy for a senior to update himself so easily ye aar tu pede ki like aap mein aag bahut hai na sir hum mein itni nahi hai nahi tu bombay mein aa ja malum padega एकदम जूनियर मोस्ट छोकरा भी खट करके खड़ा होके बोलेगा साहब व्हाट यू से इज नॉट राइट सो एंड सो सो एंड सो आर्टिकल हैज बीन अपीयर्ड लाइक दिस व्हिच सेज दिस एंड ऑल ऑफ अस रिस्पेक्ट इट आई डोंट थिंक वी रियली आर टेलिंग तेरे को क्या मालूम ऐसा तो बोल ही नहीं सकता बंबई में सर या तो यही चलता है तेरे को क्या मालूम अब मेरे को कोई चैलेंज करता है मैं कहता हूं यार मेरे को ये दिखा कहां है मेरे को पढ़ने का है ये कि ये कहां पे है वही बोलता है इधर इधर भी बच्चे लोग बोलता है ये सब आर्टिकल है ये सो एंड सो आर्टिकल क्या करेगा तुम्हारे जो सीनियर है ना उनसे लड़ाई करते थे और रिवोल्ट करते जाए उसको तो यार पढ़ पुढ़ के जाके थोड़ा सा किने तो उसको थोड़ा इम्प्रेशन मार और सर बोलना तुम्हारा पुराना हो गया है अभी जरा बंद करो वरना <coughs> क्या गए सर मैं वो बाकी चीजें सर यहाँ डिस्कस नहीं करना चाहता आपसे पर्सनली मैं डिस्कस करूंगा यहाँ पे क्या 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 क्या, क्या चल रहा है सात सौ बेड का हॉस्पिटल है सो बेड का और तो मिला हुआ है चार ओटी मिले हुए मॉडुलर और कुछ नहीं होता था यहाँ पे सर एक क्वेश्चन था बोलो बोलो 
मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स मैं कभी ग्रुप में हमारे लोगों के साथ में डिस्कशन करता हूँ तो देसे कि अरे पीएफएन क्या है मैं पंद्रह मिनट में खत्म करता हूँ आधे घंटे में खत्म करता हूँ ऐसा वो लोग बोलते हैं तो मुझे तो एक डेढ़ घंटा लगता है तो व्हाट आई फील कि आई एम डूइंग सर्जरी फर्स्ट सर्जरी एंड इट शुड बी सक्सेसफुल ऐसे मुझे लगता है व्हाट इज योर स्टेक ऑन दिस रोने लग जाते मसल वो एक डेढ़ घंटे के बाद वो वो पहले लाल दिखते थे वो बाद में साले काले होने लग जाते और वो भी जो बोलते हैं आधे घंटे में के पंद्रह मिनट में पीएफएन खत्म करते हैं विच इज वंस इन अम्पलीटेड कॉम्प्लेक्स पी एफ एन नो बडी कैन फिनिश इन फिफ्टीन मिनट टाइम वेरी ट्रू सर वो तो जब से आया वो तो समझ में हो गया छोटा इंसिजन कभी का कोई दिक्कत नहीं है और टाइम कोई दिक्कत नहीं है हाँ एक मैराथन नहीं होना चाहिए बस सर ये अंडरस्टूड द मीनिंग ऑफ मैराथन सर्जरी बहुत अरे मैराथन सर्जन की कोई कमी नहीं है इस दुनिया में जब तक वो साला मसल टिश्यू रोते नहीं तब तक साले काटते रहो सर कल ही एक गैलेजी फ्रैक्चर फिक्स हुआ है मेरे हॉस्पिटल में साढ़े तीन घंटे के अंदर अरे कोई कोई उसके टुकड़े दिख नहीं रहे होंगे यार उसको रहता है ऐसा होता है कभी कभी दो स्क्रू ड्राइवर तोड़ दिए मेरे चलो थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच गाड़ी को ना सर करता हूँ आपको फोन बाद में थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर गुड नाइट सर गुड नाइट सर गुड नाइट सर